In today's show, it is time for a 12-team nine category. Salary cap slash auction draft, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free available on all platforms, including, of course, here on YouTube. Today, as I said, we are doing an auction draft, a 12-team, nine-category auction draft also now known as a salary cap draft. I hate that term mainly because it confuses people with the actual, you know, something that already exists, a salary cap draft where you use the real NBA salary cap or real NBA player salary. So that, that's where the confusion lies. That's why I always, I don't know why they move away from the auction term, but why I'd have to throw both in because otherwise there can be some confusion there. So we're going to do this draft today. Now, what I'm thinking I'm trying to do, now I've done a bit of prep for this draft. I think what I'm going to do is head in and try and go with an aggressive four-category punt. Now, people will hate that idea, and I'm going to try and get this value. So I've got a bunch of targets that I want to get, and then based on the Yahoo average dollar spend on these players, it's going to cost me $167. Based on the Yahoo projected cost for these guys, it's going to cost me $191. Based on how I value them, it's going to value them at about $400 for me, so it's a lot of value. But there are, there are plenty of spots that that can go wrong. For example, like I've got guys like Josh Giddy who put in a fantastic game yesterday and his average price is at $1. So he's not going to go for $1. He's probably going to go for 4 or 5 yeah, Do I take that risk there? Can I get everyone else that I, that I want to get at a cheaper price? These are the targets that I have for my team to try and build it to a situation where I think it's as strong as it can get. So let's see how it actually goes during this draft. I want to get... A lot of centers. Robert Williams, Rudy Gobert, DeAndre Ayton, Yusuf Nurkic. I want those guys. Draymond Green, I want. I want DeMar DeRozan, Drew Holiday, Nerlens Noel, DeJounte Murray, Mason Plumley, Josh Giddy, Jalen Suggs, Tyrese Maxey, and Killian Hayes. That is who I am setting out to get. I've got the prices that I'm willing to pay for those guys. I've got the prices that I value them at, which is not the price that I'm willing to pay. For example, you know, in what I'm trying to do here, Williams is Rob Williams is a fifty dollar player. I'm not spending that on him. Eighteen bucks, nineteen bucks, I'll spend that on him. All right. So it's and I'll have to make adjustments because some of these Giddy might go for ten bucks, and then I'm in real trouble in terms of how this build goes. But I think I've given myself a bit of a buffer on the value of these players. Some of these guys won't go for as much as they're projected to go. And I think this gives me a really strong value. And it just shows the way that you can do things a little bit different to how others would approach it. And we'll see. Nobody knows that this is the strategy that I'm going into this draft with. So we'll see how that ends out uh, or ends up playing out for us here. Now, what I do in all these mock drafts, I don't uh, go through the flow of them or I interrupt the flow of them. Let's talk about sweat block because this might get sweaty for me. This might get stressful and I might need the strongest antiperspirant, the doctor created, doctor recommended formula that is sweat block. Sweat block, it's great. You put it on at nighttime, wipe under your arms with the sweat block wipes. Go to bed, get up the next day, go to work, go to school, go to your auction draft and you're covered for up to seven days. I've been using it. It's been great. It's been, I'm really, really impressed with what sweat block's been doing. It's been around for over 10 years. I've only just found out about it recently, but it's been awesome. Amazon, it's there. CVS, you can go into your CVS store, you can find Sweatblock. But now you can also get it at 20% off, 20% off by heading to sweatblock.com and using the promo code locked on. No more pitting out. Is that a term people use? I don't know. No more picking your shirt based on what color it is and whether it shows up sweat stains. Sweatblock is the product that you want to help alleviate those issues with excessive sweating. If you're looking to start a fantasy basketball league with People who might be beginners coming across from fantasy football, Sleeper is the app for you to have a look at. They have their unique one-of-a-kind game pick format where you have only pick one game per player. That's it for the week. So very much akin to fantasy football. 
You also have uh, their points only formats, which is all they offer. But if you are coming again with beginners, whether it's your workmates and your schoolmates, the ease of using this app on your phone, they've got a desktop client now as well, is fantastic. The draft room looks great. They've got dynasty formats, redraft formats, third round reversal, which is something that I wish the other sites would institute as well. Some really good stuff on Sleeper. So get your mates together. Start yourself a fantasy basketball league before the season begins, of course. Get them all together. Get that Sleeper app going and start your new league. Football is back and the number one place for all of your football action is, of course, Bet Online with a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests. Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using our promo code LOCKED ON to receive that bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, and right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, so to do this auction today, I am going to be joined by Zach Hanshu from Fantasy Pros. He's going to be in this auction draft with me, this mock draft with me. Um, he doesn't know what my strategy is, or what I'm going for, so hopefully he doesn't have a similar idea. Uh, I might have to make quick pivots in this. This could go horribly, horribly wrong. But I'm, I've been trying to plan this out and basing it off you know, values and auctions and average and projected numbers that are on Yahoo. And hopefully that can get me enough value for this to work out in my favor. So let's go and get Zach, bring him in and get started in this, uh, in this auction draft. All right, let's bring him in now. Uh, Zach Hanshu is here with me. Zach, welcome. Appreciate you having me, man. Good to be here. So we are doing a nine cat auction format here 12 team league on yahoo zach um anything in particular that you look for in a in an auction draft or any strategy that you th you're thinking of going in with uh, biggest thing i can say is um just try to save a little bit of money for the end i mean it's nice to grab some big values at the beginning i mean if you can get you know a luca and a Giannis right off the bat uh, but then you're blowing all your money and at the end you know, guys that have saved their money are kind of scooping up really valuable players for one to two dollars. So try to save a little bit of money for the end. That seems, uh, you know, that's where a lot of the value ends up being. It is always the case, but it is hard to resist those top end guys. We'll see how this auction uh, ends up playing out because people always say to me, Zach, you know, you don't say enough about what price you pay for this guy in an auction, but my, uh, very differently to a snake format, every auction is completely different. And snakes are different because you know different guys jump off. But in general, the the round the round range is pretty similar. In an auction, the prices can be like ten bucks one time, twenty five dollars the next time. So you don't get a guy that goes in the eighth round in a snake draft and then the in the second round in a in a snake snake draft it doesn't change that much. Whereas as soon as that first guy goes off the board, everything changes in an auction. So that's why it is hard to pin down. You spend this much on this guy because it is all very dependent on everything that has come uh, beforehand. We're getting ready for this draft. We'll come back in uh, in what will be two seconds for you guys, but for us, it'll be a few minutes as we just wait for this draft room to, uh, to fill up and for it to begin. So we will see you. Hey, coming up right now. All right, we are getting ready for this draft to start. Let's bring up the draft room. Over on the screen, we're 30 seconds away from this uh, from this kicking off. I am nominating seventh. Zach is nominating sixth. So we're nominating right next to each other there. Um, who are you going to throw out first, Zach? I, you know what? I think we're going to uh, just take a chance on somebody that's probably going to be a little polarizing, Kyrie Irving. We talked a little bit offline and uh, really curious to see where uh, people decide to bid up for him. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. I'm going to throw out Scotty Barnes for my one and just see how people react to preseason yesterday. I think he's an interesting player um, for this season, especially with Boucher and Siakam now both out to start the year. But how, how that all works out as the season goes on, I think there might be a bit of overpaying going, all right, we're ready to go here. The right to win. Good on you, mate. Let's go. Throw out someone to uh, bid on and let's see how we, uh, how we end up here. Who's he throwing? Oh, he did it for you. He threw out Kyrie first off. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, know he right. didn't. No, my screen was wrong. He threw out Derek White. Is he trying to troll me here with Derek White? <laughs> oh, my God. Maximum Derek. Um, all right, Derek White. Um, are you in on this? I think he's like a $20. Oh, I think he's a $20 player. And I, I got him for 20 in my last auction. I won't be 
doing that. If that was in a points league. Uh, so he's at 15, 16. That's well above that Yahoo projected. Oh no, Yahoo's projected him up to 17 now. So they've adjusted their numbers. But his average uh, salary is eight. Because Yahoo had a big rankings update um, the other day. And a lot of the value players have changed and uh, have gone. Have uh, have uh, value had eliminated. All right, so who ended up... Was that you that got him? No, it was... No, it was it you. It was me. $17 dues for Derek White. Interesting. Giannis, are you worried about Giannis and his knee? Uh, it's a little concerning, but... Um... I don't think so. I mean, definitely coming off the championship run, he played well into last season, obviously. But no, I don't think so. I think Giannis, his average price here is $66. It's too expensive for me. I don't like spending 60 plus on anybody. Um, 66 is a little, it's too high. Like that's, yeah, this projected of $60 there, I think is even still too high. I think he's more of a $55 guy. Um, and he's going for a pretty reasonable price here. So if someone wants in, they can jump in. I am I won't be jumping in. 60 bucks for Yanni. All right, so we're heading up to that area. I always like, I don't know how you, like we throw polarizing guys out. You said Kyrie, you're going to throw him out. I'm going to throw Barnes out just to see how people react. But getting money off the board early is always really important too. So getting some of these big name guys, especially big name guys that you don't want anything to do with is a good way of doing it. Danny gets Yanni for 60 bucks, which is probably higher than I would have spent, but oh well, there it is. And then uh, Big Chungus, Nicole Jokic. Big, big Chungus, Big Chungus. You got Jokic clearly number one. Yeah, I uh, clearly yes, but I think there's at least an argument to be made for taking Steph number one. Um, but yeah, Jokic is number one. I've said this before, and I don't know if I've thrown these numbers out. Maybe I have, but I reckon it's probably less than a fifty percent chance that Jokic ends up as the number one player. For even though that might sound wild to say, there's, no one thought he was number one last year. He wasn't number one for the final two months of last season. Um, Steph could come up. Harden could come up. Anthony Davis could come out of nowhere. Yeah, back to be number one. Towns could be number one. Look, there are a number of guys who can jump into that spot. Kevin Durant could be number one. Giannis, somehow. Doncic, maybe. Probably not. Almost unlikely. But you know, there's no guarantee that he is number one. And he just goes for 64 bucks, which I think, again, is probably a little bit too high. There's no... I wouldn't, if I had number one in the snake draft, I'm not overthinking it. I'd probably just take him there, but it doesn't mean that he finishes number one. But as I say all the time, if the number one player ends up being the fourth overall player, it doesn't actually hurt hurt your draft all that much. No. And with, I mean, shoot, with Jamal Murray out, I mean, the offense has to run through Jokic even more than what it did last year, right? I mean, I yes. I just can't see a scenario where I'm not taking him number one. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't avoid that. Um, Curry coming up here he's at $57 I think Steph we're looking at I think Steph as a $60, $60 player is fair enough and I think the, you know, oh that now that's pretty cheap Amos gets in for 57 Steph was amazing obviously last season I'm not sure he can keep up that level for the entirety of the year but he was yeah, ridiculously good let's see if he uh, can maintain that level again but you're not gonna he's not gonna bust I think we, we know that Embiid we're looking at like a 40 48 dollar guy I reckon here like that projected at 50 is about right the 55 56 average salary is probably probably a little bit too high for my liking do you think this is the season Zach that Embiid plays 70 plus games uh I don't I don't think so um and I think uh you know when they brought in Andre Drummond I think that definitely uh kind of sways the answer towards no even more right so I mean you have a guy that can really be effective as a rebounder, as a shot blocker. Um, you know, he can even get his on offense every now and then if you're just bobbing it up to him. Um, so I, I think, you know, Drummond is going to – I think he's going to take some of that load off of Embiid, especially with, if Simmons isn't going to play. Uh, they're going to be asking Embiid to do a uh, just everything. Are you nominating Kyrie? Yes, sir. Oh, you, didn't, you missed it. Oh, shoot. I'm sitting here rambling on, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's hard, man. It's hard to talk and, and draft at the same time. Doncic is up now. Uh, maybe I'll throw... Should I throw Kyrie out? No, I'm going to throw Scotty Barnes out just for fun. Um, all right. So Doncic is up there. I think Luca we're looking at as probably like a $45, $50 player. He's almost a $45 player. He's going to go for way more unless the people here are switched on. Let's see how... How do you view Luca? Um I think actually you might view him a lot higher than I do. So do you want to talk about it? Oh, you're in the bid here. So how high are you willing to go for Luca? Because I'm not involved in this at all. I, I would go 50. I mean, I think 50 is fine for him. Um, 
I mean, really what we're looking for is him to kind of take a step forward in the free throw shooting. Um, uh, obviously, he's a high usage guard. His turnovers probably aren't going to improve a ton. Uh, he can clean that up a little bit. But, I mean, just the massive numbers that he can put up as far as a score, rebounding, assists. Uh, he can chip in a little over a steal a game if he can maybe boost that just a tiny bit. Um, I mean, maybe we could see top five value. So, I my hopes are really high for Luka this year. But, um you know, I understand wanting to draft him for you know fifty three. I think that's a fair value. Yeah, it's, that's not a bad price. I don't, I don't dislike that for Doncic. Now it's time for me to throw Scotty Barnes out. Let's see how people react to this. One dollar for Scotty Barnes. I actually, don't want him for a dollar. So let's see if people throw that bid on him. You're going to throw something on him, aren't you? You're going to save me, Zach. There it is. Two bucks for Scotty oh. Barnes. Let's see. Oh come on! What's it? I thought everyone would be jumping in on this. I actually don't mind him for two bucks. But it's not. I just want to. Oh, people are not buying it. I am shocked. After yesterday, the amount of people telling me. Yeah, I saw someone. Um, I think on a Reddit post yesterday, Zach, to tell me that any time, as soon as the the snake draft counter hits a hundred, they're drafting him, which is insane to me to get him at that area. But the fact that he went for two bucks, I think that's not bad for you. I was expecting way more people to be in on that. I wonder if that was the same person that commented on one of my posts today too in the fantasy B ball channel that said, "Yeah, anything after a hundred, that was I, it. You know, yeah. Taking him, it's an auto draft. Yeah, yeah, so that was the guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. Zion, how worried about him are you with the broken foot? Oh, I'm extremely worried, man. I mean, anytime you don't hear about an injury like this yeah. until, I mean, what did we hear about it a few days before, uh, you know, before games started? Uh, I mean, anytime you hear about something like that that late in the year and the team's been hush-hush about it, I mean, especially he missed so many games as a rookie, so you've got to be worried about the recurring injury. Um, yes, I'm just looking at something there. Uh, 25 bucks for Zion. You're seeing a lot of the guys go at a lower price than the average and projected salary here, which is very, very interesting. That means that some of the mid-price guys are going to get pushed up. Zion for 25 is... Pretty good value. Let's see where Lillard ends up here. I think Lillard's probably like a $50 player. What did he go for? 48. So look, he's just... Amos has gone hard early. Look at Amos's team. Curry, Lillard, and Embiid. He has got $48 left for his final 11 players. So he is going hard on this, really top heavy. And now he's basically not able to bid on anybody or win any other bids here until we get closer to the end. Freddie Van Vliet. He shot horribly in that game yesterday. That's going to be a concern for him all season, but he is a really, really interesting player. I think that Yahoo $33 mark is probably a little bit high, but not too bad. You're obviously bidding here. What's your maximum? What's your ceiling here on Fred? I mean, I would go 30 couple dollars, maybe 35 if the bidding gets hot. I mean, he's a top 15-ish guy, right? I mean, yeah. that's his ceiling this season. Yeah, I think I so. Think. Yeah, no, I, I think... Look, if he ended up 12th for the year, I wouldn't be 100% shocked. I think he's sure. just going to get... Like, he, he blocks a lot of shots for a small guard, or just for any guard, really. He gets steals, he gets assists, he hits threes. He's a good free throw guy. He's, he's a shit field goal guy, but he'll score a lot. He'll get more usage. He'll play a ton of minutes with Nick Nurse. 36. So, he went... Uh, so, that's interesting. So, Lillard and Zion, well below their Yahoo projected and averages. Van Vliet, above. So that, that's a, not everyone's going under. So that, that's a good sign for me to get some value on some players a little bit later. Who are we throwing out now? Jim Harden. Harden can finish number one this year. Um, I think, especially if Kyrie's sitting home games, I'm pretty big on Harden. Are you worried at all about the hamstring? I am not. Are you? I don't think so. No, and, and just as you mentioned, man, uh, if Kyrie Irving ends up sitting home games, I mean, yeah, that's a that's a argument for number one overall absolutely oh yeah and look he's at the moment he's at 50 bucks with Jokic <clears throat> going at 60 and Yanni around that 58 mark Harden needs to be in that same area and Steph in that same area too like 50 bucks is too low yeah I'm jumping in on this one for sure I think he's like a he's like a 60 dollar 61 62 dollar player you're higher than that projected number he's just going to rack up so many assists um and then if Kyrie's out, the assist will be there, and then the scoring will come up as well. We know the free throws. Although he wasn't in the top five free throw percentage guys last season in terms of fantasy impact. 54 bucks. that's a pretty good deal for you. Whew, that is nice. So who have you got? You've got three guys already. White, Harden, and Scotty Barnes for the two bucks. You've got a fair bit of cash left over as well. Carl Anthony Towns. 
up here. I'm pretty excited to see what Towns can do this year. Hopefully, he gets his blocks back up, which fell off last season. I think he's like around a $50 type of player here. Let's see. Yeah, Yahoo's got him at that 55. I think 52. I don't mind that mark. We're at 47. So people are still going under. They're holding back. A couple of us still have not got any players yet, which is pretty standard for me in an auction. Towns goes for 47 bucks to you again. Zach, you are so, just loading up. Yeah, yeah I, I, apparently, man, I, uh, I'm i not taking my own advice, but I mean, you take the value where you can get no, it. That's so true. I, I mean, I think Harden for 54 and Towns for 47. Like you mentioned, man, every draft is different. So I think if I can get these values, I'm, I got to jump on them. Now, the people who are listening to this show and watching this show, I, I told them what my strategy was before. I haven't told you what it is. So we'll see how I end up going. But you are right in terms of that value popping up. So I'm trying something very specific in this draft. That value popping up um, and getting, you know, saving three, four, five dollars on some of these top end guys is pretty important. And I think that can lead you with it. Now, you've got to obviously be able to get the right guys with the rest of your picture, 10, 10 spots left to fill for 80 bucks. Um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Mikhail Bridges is up here. I think he is going to be underpriced. I think he's like a $15-ish sort of guy. I don't know. He's mm-hmm. getting up to that price right now. And Yahoo's got him at... Yahoo had him... No, it's ESPN that had him ridiculously low. That outside the top 140, they had him. And like a $2 or $1 auction guy. So oh, he, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was out of control. I don't know if they've updated him. I think they have a little bit. But he, him and Miles Turner were outside the top 130. Oh. Mikhail Bridges at 15... Pretty good, pretty good price that is. So who are we looking at? Demontis Sabonis. Um, Sabonis was the number one player over the last six weeks of last season. How likely it is that you think he can be maybe a first round guy this year? Uh, I kind of have I have him as a second round guy right now, but mm-hmm. I mean, it, would it be unreasonable to see him creep up there, especially when you got injuries to T.J. Warren and Karis LeVert? Uh, no, not necessarily at all. I mean, he can score, he can rebound. He's he's kind of that cheat code. He's the passing big man, right, that you kind of really love to get in your fantasy drafts. So, um, yeah, I, I think first-round value is definitely in his wheelhouse. And $35, man, I wouldn't be upset with that value at all. No. Um, just in, completely, what do you go for, 35? Yeah, that's not bad. Durant for 49, I'm not in on this. Just... Some news for preseason that's happening today. We, we talked about this a bit off air, but I, I missed it. Um, Kyle Anderson is healthy for the Grizzlies, and Dylan Brooks is out, and Kyle Anderson is still not starting. They're starting Melton and Bain in the backcourt. That's really interesting, isn't it? I don't know what that it is. I don't know what that means for Anderson or what that means for Bain and Melton, and it could be just a disaster with all those guys all season. But I didn't expect that to be the case. Didn't expect Kyle Anderson to be. Coming off the bench with Brooks out. Hmm. Obviously, that I, I do think they want Bain to have a larger role this year. But we will see. Hmm. Paul George. I'm pretty big on Paul George this season. I think he's like a $40 guy. And look, Yahoo's bumped him way up to that 40 They had him at like 25 earlier on, 25 uh, ranking overall. And that salary is now not... That's like a first-round salary. So that has been updated pretty significantly. And I think at 40 bucks, it's about about right I, I'll be honest with you man I would go much higher for Paul George yep. and I love the $40 value right here um, I, I really legitimately think he has top 5 upside this season with Kawhi Leonard out it's possible there's absolutely no reason that he can't get there if he gets the steal the, the steals is the thing which when he was that top 5 player in OKC he had like a huge amount of steals um, and they dropped off last year but if they come back then yeah like he can easily do that uh, Kevin Porter Jr. Looking at, should be going for 10 plus here. Yep, all right. So we're at $11, $12. Look at that. Projected salary 12, average 5.5. So again, another one of those players that Yahoo had ranked very, very low. And they've bumped him up now. And now he's going at that correct sort of price, which is that $12 uh, $12 mark for KPJ, who is going to be the starting point guard for the Rockets this season. $12 for him goes to the San Diego Mermaids. Yeah. And that's why you don't spend your money so much early because I would have loved to have grabbed them for 13 or 14 bucks. I just don't have it right now. Just some the guys that the, none of the guys that I'm targeting have been nominated yet. Your nomination now. All right, this time I will go for Jeff. 
Jason Tatum. This is a forty-ish dollar guy, I would suggest. Forty-five dollar player. Yahoo's got him at fifty. Maybe too high for me. Um, but we will see how he ends up. How high it ends up going. You uh, you think he's definitely a first round guy this year? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he should slide out of the first round anywhere. Really, he was great at the end of last season um, after he'd recovered from COVID. And I think that he's going to have a pretty high usage once again. And I think the step for him to get from like 10, 11 to 6 or 7 is improving the passing. And I think that we'll see more assists from him this year. For sure. So 42, 43, this is about right. It is under that average for Yahoo, but I think it's still this is probably about the right area for Tatum to uh, to come in. Let's see. Oh, Wes gets him for the 42. My turn to nominate. All right. Well, we were going to do Kyrie in the first round. Let's do Kyrie now. And let's see how people respond to this. If Kyrie plays, he's like a $40 player if he gets vaccinated, but I just don't know whether he will or not. But I want to well, get some money Kyrie, off the board. If Kyrie plays, my team goes to shit. I mean, well, not totally to shit, but I got Harden and Durant starting in my lineup so oh you got I, I, I didn't even see that you got to as well your team is wow you are very top heavy but that is three top 10 players on your team yeah. and now you've got to fill the rest out now, Kyrie went for 22 dollars mm. that could end up look that that's that's the risk with Kyrie you get him for 22 bucks um and he plays and then you I wouldn't say you've won your league but you're not far off um Ooh. but if he doesn't play then you've burnt 20 bucks LeBron James. A fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. What did he go for? Twenty-four bucks. Eh, 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 maybe a little bit low. Uh, I, is it uh, LeBron? LeBron could have another big year. I I worry a bit about. I do worry a bit about injury for him again at his age. And his you know, two significant injuries over the last two years. It's a little bit worrying. All right, let's, let's talk Levine. How, what are you thinking about Levine and how the Bulls are all going to play out this season? Yeah, I mean, so I think people are going to – I think people are probably going to undervalue him, and I'd like, love to see what his you know, final price is here, but they're going to undervalue him because of DeRozan and you know Lonzo Ball. But, I mean, I don't see a world in which Zach Levine falls out of the top 25. Do you? No, look, yesterday I did a draft, which is – by the time you listen to this show, it's out for uh, NBC Sports Edge. We did a mock draft. And I think I got him in the third round at like pick 27 or something like that. And yeah, I think, again, that's, that's him falling quite a bit. And if he finishes top 20, it's not a huge surprise. And I was happy to see him slide into round three. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. Now, and now his price is coming up to about the right about the right spot. Yeah. I think he could probably go a little bit higher, 35, 36. So this sort of price is not a bad area uh, to go to go on Levine. Let's see. Yeah, this is not a bad... Who's getting him? Digital Huskies. So there's still four of us, that, five of us that haven't bid on a player yet. Look, Amos, Amos and you are just going for who can go the hardest, <laughs> the earliest. Amos has got Curry, Irving, Lillard, and Embiid. And you've got White, Harden, Barnes, Durant, and Towns. And you're going to be sitting back and watching everyone else bid for the next hour, probably. <laughs> Well, I guess that's what happens when you walk and try to chew gum, man. So, I, I mean, I kind of I fucked up my pick earlier where I, I didn't get it in time. So, I just wanted to blow all my money so I could sit here and chat. Nikola Vucevic. All right. I think there's some interesting narratives around this bloke this season. I think he's like a $30 player, but a lot of people are just assuming that he's just going to be as good as he was last season, which when he came to Chicago, he wasn't. He dropped way off. And they're just assuming that he's going to play like every game like he did last season, which I think is a a poor idea. Because remember, four or five years ago, like he was injured all the time. I don't think you can trust that he stays as healthy as he was last season. It's um, And I think some of that's being priced into... Look, that $44 is, is way too much for me, for Vooch, that average salary there, 44 It's just it's way too expensive. I, I do not buy that at all, do you? Some people are taking him in the first round, like at 12 13 that sort of area. No, I'm not a fan of him at that spot at all. And especially if you're at the, you know, if you're doing a snake draft 12 and 13, I mean, shit, you got Bradley Beal, you got Anthony Davis, you got Paul George. I mean, I don't know why you would be targeting Nikola Vucevic. Um, 
you know, early twenties for me, right? That's that's yeah. about the range I see him. But I, I, I mean, about... in an auction draft, no, way too expensive. Chris Paul missed three games over the last two years. That makes me very anxious that he might miss some more yeah. this year. Just law of averages at some point, and someone's going to drop in the comments. That's not what the law of averages is. Whatever. I think he's more likely to get hurt this year than he has been the last two years. Just because, again, healthy for two years, it's just it's just not what happens. People, it's very very hard at age thirty six to never miss games when you've had consistent knee problems throughout your career. Anyway, I'm talking too much about Chris Paul and his knees. Uh, I think he can be like a $25 to $26 guy here. And he's got currently going at $22, $23. I think I'm, you know, on a per game basis, I think he's like a 30 buck guy. But you've got to mm-hmm. price in maybe some absences, which you know, coming off off-season wrist surgery as well is a little bit of a worry. And he started out shaky in terms of his shooting numbers uh, last season also. So hopefully the wrist doesn't impact that. 23 bucks for Chris is pretty strong. Let's go with Bam Adebayo. 33 bucks is what I'm looking at Bam in that sort of zone, which is a little bit, a couple of dollars less than the Yahoo projection. Um, I'm a little concerned that one of his biggest strengths, Zach, is him being a passing big man. And I worry a bit that Lowry takes a little bit of that away. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I still think he's a, a, a mid second round guy, but yeah, you got two guards in Lowry and um, you know, in Lowry and Jimmy Buckets that are you know they're really good passers, right? So, yep. um, you know, you're going to lose some of that appeal with Bam Adebayo, but uh, just I mean, he can do just about everything else except shoot the three ball. So, I, I don't know. I don't see him dropping out of that kind of mid to late second round. That was pretty cheap for Bam, 27 bucks. I probably, yeah. if I hadn't have been talking, I probably would have gotten in on that. Even though he wasn't one of my targets that I looked at at the start of this draft, he does, he would have fitted, or fitted, fitted not the right word, fit what I wanted. Um, John Isaac, I don't know if he's going to be ready to start the season, which is wild considering it'll be 15 months since he tore his ACL. But they're obviously going to be cautious with him. He can easily be a $20 player. He, you, you never pay that for him because of the injury risk. But um, could be a real interesting late round player. Man, four bucks. Four dollars though. It's not bad. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good upside value. Mm-hmm. The San Diego Mermaids are nominating a player. All right, I'm in on this one. Let's see how we go. All right, let's see if I can get myself a player. Rudy Gobert, if for those of you who are listening on audio and didn't see who it is. Rudy Gobert, I'm in on here. You can't bid on him, so I'll, I want to go up to about 30 for him. But I've got yep. a feeling that I'm going to get outbid. You're bidding with the router team, it looks like. Uh, all these bastards going in on Gobert here. All right, I'm sitting at 30. I'm winning the bid. Uh, don't. Oh, Jiggler, my guy. All right, let's go up to 32. I'll go to 34 on Gobert. Fuck off. Um, I might I'll wind this clock right, right down for my last bid. So is this it? You're not going in a dollar more? Mm, mm, I don't know. You almost have to now. Uh yeah, let's go one more. This is it. I'm stopping at 36, and then I'll have to reassess what I'm doing with my team. Fuck off! You can have Ooh. him for 37. You can absolutely have him for 37 bucks, and then I'll have to figure out what else I'm going to do with my team now. That's fine. I'll find someone else to fit that gap. Josh, I gotta ask, what is uh, what is your strategy, man? Since I'm kind of sitting here with with no money to play with, That's what's good that question. strategy? I'm going um. I'm trying to go with a really heavy four punt build and I'm trying to just target rebounds, assists, steals, blocks and field goal percentage and get a bunch of undervalued players that way. So not worrying about points and threes, going for low scorers. Um, yeah. And Gobert was one, but I can sub Gobert in there for like a, I can get a Miles Turner. I can throw him in there mm-hmm. as a shot blocker. I can throw a Jaron Jackson in there perhaps. Um, I can replace him with other guys. And Anthony Davis for 32. I'm going to throw 33 on him. Yeah, why not? I'll 
I'll go to 35 on Davis. Maybe he can be my Gobert replacement. He's up to 30, uh, 37. I'm not going to go 38 on Davis. Yes, yeah, so I just need a replacement now for Gobert and my team. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to just build some value in, but that Jello Jiggler went, that's really high, 39 bucks. And it's just, it, I could have kept going, but it just doesn't make sense because it just takes away the value of getting him at the right price. So drop you think bear. He back this year? Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. Look, a lot. Of, every Lakers person I seem to talk to seems to go. They they think there's going to be a big bounce back from him. He came into camp out of shape last year. He they expect him to be almost a focal point um, in terms of offense, and, and and a usage spike might actually come despite Westbrook being there. Which it's hard to wrap your head around that, but yeah, multiple people have said that to me. So I'm not I'm not ruling it out. Trey Young up here. He goes for 36. Young wasn't as good as people expected him to be last season for fantasy, but I think 36 is about about right. Yep. And Dennis here in the chat just says, I've got Anthony Davis for $2 more than Gobert. Yeah, look, that's a great deal. And go, that price pushing up to Gobert at 39 was too high for sure. That's why I had to pull out for it. Ja Morant. How are you viewing Morant this season? Are you in on Morant? I think he's overvalued, man. Um, I, I think people are really expecting him to take the next step forward, uh, even after he kind of regressed a little bit in terms of efficiency last year, which you know kind of hurt his fantasy value. Um, so he's going to have to take you know another step forward, even though Memphis kind of reloaded at. Uh, you know, a lot of their positions this year. I mean, this is a really, really deep team, uh, in ter- especially in the backcourt. Uh, so, no, I, I think he's way overvalued this season, uh, especially in, uh, you know, snake drafts. Well, he just went for $14 here, which is well below Yahoo's price. I think $14 is actually probably probably right for him. I think that's r- yeah. probably solid value. And if you, you, you are looking at him on that Yahoo pricing at 22 bucks average salary, that's too much. It's your turn to nominate. All right, and I'm going to have to do something that I need to get some cheap guys, and Noel is a guy that I love this year, so I'm going to try to get him on the cheap. Oh, that's who I wanted. Oh. Oh, he's going up here. You're going six bucks on Nolan's Noel. He's up to eight, but seven bucks. Right, someone else can have him for, for that. That's taking all yeah. of the value out of Nolan's Noel. Yeah, I'm not going up that high. Yeah. Oh well. All right. So this is what happens. Like uh, I came into this draft with a plan. Don't know if it's necessarily. It's not. It's not working out at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna try Clint Capella. All right. There you go. And, but I can easily pivot. There is so many guys still left here that I can get for good prices. Capella, I'm going to throw him in as a Gobert type replacement. Looking at him as like 20 bucks sort of player. That no well one. People are, yeah. Look, it, it gets to a point where if you start going too high on guys, then it's just not worth it. The value just isn't there. Yeah. And I think there's just been so much information rolling around this season. I mean, I I don't know. This season seems to be kind of more than in the past that people are just really catching on to these late round values, and you're just not able to get them at, at such a discount like you might have been you know, before. Now Capella's ended up going here at, at a at a decent chunk, but I've still mm-hmm. got money to grab him. All right. 23 bucks. Can I... I can justify that. Oh, someone in the chat's not happy with you. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. He can, he can not be happy if he wants. All oh, right, yeah. 25 and capacity. All right, now it's getting to a point where I'm going to pull out here. I'll go to 27 and then I'll let them bid him up that much. Oh, 
All right, so I got Capella for 27. So that's my Gobert replacement. You happy with that price? Um, it's not bad. It's probably yeah. a little bit higher than I wanted, but it's not bad. Um, again, with if I get some of the other guys that I want, it'll be it'll work all right for me. But I think there's, the problem is that a lot of people seem to be going on this similar sort of slant to me, which makes it a little bit harder. Julius Randall now up. Um, I think Randall's like a twenty-five dollar guy. Yahoo's got him at 34 average. It's too high for me. I am a little worried about how Kemba and Fournier will impact him. But I still think he's going to be pretty good. Yeah, he'll definitely be good. But, I mean, he led the league in minutes last year. I, I think yeah. New York's kind of cognizant of that. They're going to they're gonna take some of the load off of him this year. They d- He definitely did lead the league in minutes, and it was insane how much he was playing. Um, but they yeah. can... Uh... Ooh, DeAndre Ayton. I want to be in on this as well. There you go. What do you is think he about play pissed off this year or what? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's got it in him to play pissed off. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. And this is, of course, we're referring to the fact that they won't give him a max contract extension. Not sure why. I mean, pay the piper, right? Yeah, but interestingly, like yesterday, it came out Monty Williams saying we want Mikael Bridges to be the third option, and so I'm not. I don't know how much they're valuing Aiton. If they want Bridges to be the fourth option, that means they want uh, the third option. That means they want Aiton to be the fourth option, and that's not when you when you're looking to placate someone and get them in and signed and committed. That's not the way you do it. Exactly, and I don't know why they're looking at fuck to off Bridges to be the third option. Um, Aiton's got way more self creation ability than mm-hmm. um, Bridges got more than Aiton, I think, to do that. Oh fuck, missed it. Damn it. Oof. Ah, that's what happens when you're the talking. The router got it. Talking too much. All right. <laughs> Chris Middleton. So what am I going to do to replace... I've got to work out how to replace those guys now. I know how I'm going to replace Aiden. Um, Chris Middleton. He was great last year. He's being undervalued almost everywhere. I think he's a $25 guy, probably. Oh, no, Yahoo's bumped his salary up there. But he, you, I think you'll find him go for a lower than that here. Yeah. I, I mean, he's just he, he's just a ridiculously safe pick. You know what yeah. you're getting from him every single year. Yep. That's my dog's upset that I didn't bid on DeAndre Ayton. Middleton for 19. So yeah, I knew he'd go knew he'd go lower. Hmm. Like that value. Hmm, that is good. That is good. Ah. OG Ananobi. But what about Scarf? OG. Blizzard stop OG. Uh, you better stop OG. He looked great yesterday, I thought. Increased usage, efficient. Thought he looked pretty good. And yeah, he's a twenty dollar guy here to me. And you'll see that again, Yahoo. Had him ranked way too low, hence the average salary is at 15, but they've bumped him way up, so his projected salary is now higher. I think that 23 is right in line with where he should be. He shouldn't go for more than Middleton, um, but we'll see whether he ends up doing that. Has everyone got a player now? Yeah, everyone has a player. That's good to know. I tried jumping in on that one just because the value was so low. But What's the max you can uh, bid now? Oh, I can do, let's see, 21, I think. Uh, twenty uh, 22, I think. 22, yeah. Ananobi goes for 19, the same as Middleton. Ooh, Maga Porter Jr. Are you knocking down Porter for the unvaccinated status? Uh, I probably should. If I'm doing it for Kyrie, I probably should for Michael Porter Jr., right? But, yeah, but it's uh, different, though, because Kyrie would have to miss home games where Porter would not. Yeah, um, so probably not right now. I still think Michael Porter Jr. is a top 20-ish guy. He looked great yesterday as well, like scored yeah. really well. Of course, no Jokic. But this is a guy that you know should push towards 30 bucks here, but he's not. Like That price is still way too low. So hopefully one of these bosses or drop bears or jello jigglers or someone gets in on this. I'm the only person with one player now. Hmm. Oh, no, not on the boss has got one. He's got a $4 player, John Isaac. That's an interesting way to start a team. This is uh this is really this is really strange, man. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot of guys have really been bid up. I mean, we haven't seen any bidding no. wars on any. Well, now 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 that I say a- that, apart from Gobert, Gobert is the only guy that got really bid up all that much. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
which is sometimes sometimes good. Like I, I had a target on Gobert, and you got to be nimble in a, in an auction. Like I wanted to get Gobert, but not at that price. But getting that extra eight bucks off the board is is pretty key, especially if someone's looking for similar players. I mean, a Porter at twenty seven, and you think it's pretty good value. I think he could be a yeah, thirty sure. buck guy. Shay Gilgis Alexander. People are petrified of Shay. He's just going to get shut down every time he gets hurt. I uh, I I do not think that they will do that. Do you? No, I. I, I think the legitimate concern more than maybe injury status is just is, you know, is OKC going to be tanking at the end of the season? But I you can't really sway your rankings that much in one direction just because of things like that. So, no, he's a he's a easy second round guy for me. He's a, he should be a thirty dollar player here. And it's sure it's, it's pretty low at the moment. He should, he should be $30, but people are petrified. They'll just think he'll play 50 games again. And he didn't have a fake injury last year. It was a real injury because it kept him out of the Olympics as well uh, or the Olympic qualifiers. So it was a real injury. Plantar fasciitis is no joke. Um, sure, they're going to be cautious. There's no doubt about that, but they're not just going to... I don't think he's going to get horfeited. They're not going to say, to stay home because we're too good. I, I just do not think that's going to be the case. They don't want to piss him off because he doesn't give a fuck about draft picks coming in. Why would he care? No, he just got the bag, man. Why yeah. would he? It's like I want to play, man. Let me let me make my All Star team. Twenty six bucks for Shea, about the same price as Michael Porter. I think both of those guys probably could have gone a little bit higher. Chris Wood. Um, all right, I'm in on this. Let's go. Yeah. Um, it depends how high we go. Looks like I'll be rooting you on here. He's gonna go above my price. Yeah, probably. I think I'll be out at like 24. But this could be like my Aiton replacement. So I'm happy to get him for 24, 25 if I can. Uh, I'm the boss. Got too much money left over. Come on, that's it. Don't bid, don't bid, don't bid. Thank you. All right, Christian Wood for 24. I'm okay with that. In fact, I'm pretty yeah. happy with getting him for that price. I'm not worried about his poor free throws, which I think can actually improve this year. So I'm okay with getting him there. Just building up some nice big man numbers. Brad Beal. First round guy, probably. He's got an average of 45 bucks. I don't think he's getting that high here, to be honest. I, I think he's going to end really, up cheap. Yeah, I don't understand why people are undervaluing him. I mean, he's been a first-round guy two years in a row. He's going to do it again this year. I, I can't see how he wouldn't, and I can't see how he doesn't win the scoring title again this year. Yeah, he should uh, average 30. Yeah, I, I mean, but you can consistently get him at the, you know, the first, second-round turn and maybe even a little early into the second round. So... Um, sorry, I know we're doing an auction and I'm talking just regular value here, but uh, he's undervalued for sure. If you get him at 35 right here, yeah, he's I mean, got that's a, crazy value. Should be 40. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So he goes for 35. So there's some real values, it, it, which happens in literally every auction. Zach mm -hmm. is that in this area, everyone starts going five, six dollars under. It happens all the time. It's why I try and save my money. Um, because of the just the value. It's not to say that the guys you get early on aren't. Yeah, you know, getting Jokic for sixty two is probably right on where it needs to be, but you're not saving five or six bucks, which is what you can do in these mid rounds. Don Mitchell, I think we're looking at a thirty dollar guy here, and he's already at thirty, so that's probably pushing some of that value away from him. And he just goes for thirty to I'm the boss. So I'm the boss started out slow. Now he's got Shea, Beal, Mitchell, and Isaac. Pretty good selection of guards there at some decent prices for Shea and Beal, and Mitchell at thirty. I think I'm not saying he's don't think it's a steal necessarily, but it's not bad value. And Jim Butler, I think Jimmy should be going for around forty as well. I don't. I'm almost certain he's not going to though. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and I, I kind of perused your rankings a little bit over at Basketball Monster. I mean, you think he's a first round guy this season, right? Um, no, I don't. I don't know what you were. I don't what? know what unless you were looking at something without uh, with turnovers on, which I never would recommend doing. I think he's mid second. Um, okay, mid second sort of guy. And I worry a bit about his his injuries, which always seem to happen, and his age. Um, but at your mid-second, I think he's fine. And he, he slides. He, he'll slide into the third round in snake drafts, and 
he's actually going for the right price here. So he's not a bargain. Unlike he, him going for more than Beal is outrageous to me. I, I don't understand that at all. But no. that's people discounting based on Beal not being vaccinated. That, that, that's outrageous to me. But 41 is not bad for Butler. But when you compare it to the guy that just went before, it's pretty outrageous. LaMelo Ball still sitting there. Very interested to see where he goes. I'm going to throw a guy to you that hopefully fits your build um, and see what we can get with him. He does. He wasn't one of my targets, but I might throw three bucks on him. I really like Yucca Pirtle a lot. Oh, absolutely. Um, he's going too high for what I want. Projected salary 15 bucks. Now, they're, they're joking. 15 bucks. That's not right. Seven bucks. That's fine for Pirtle. You can take him, Jello Jiggler. Ooh. I was about to throw eight on him, but I'm not I'm not going up to nine or ten bucks. Hmm. Someone's in the chat here. A lot, lot of steals early. It'll be interesting to see how it unfolds later on. Someone said probably some later guys might go overpriced. I think that'll be the case of some of the sleeper type guys, which I might end up trying to get some of them off the board now so I can just recalibrate where I am. It's my turn to nominate. Let's throw Jordan Poole out. Let's get that money out and see who goes for him. All right, so I, I mean, what do you what do you think realistically his, his ceiling is this season? I mean, I don't really see him as more than just a a high scorer, right? I mean, do you see him as, as contributing anything in, in kind of the peripheral categories other than scoring and, and threes? Well, he's going to be their backup point guard, isn't he? Because who else is their backup point guard? So he's going to have to handle the ball somewhat. Or well, Draymond will get some of that time, but obviously you're trying to stagger those guys. He's going to yeah. get some assists. He'll hit some threes. He'll score. Um, three bucks? Uh, I don't... There's nothing wrong with taking three bucks. To me, he's a guy you love to get for $1 or $2. Yep. And getting $3 isn't crazy. But it's just... Just getting that extra dollar out there from where, you know, based on probably what he did yesterday. Again, I would have thought there's some obviously people who have pre-switched on here and people might have overreacted to yesterday, but they uh, they have they have not. D'Angelo Russell, nine bucks. I think Russell is being undervalued quite a bit as well. Um, I think he is like a twenty dollar ish sort of player. Ooh, and I got him for ten. I, I love it. I clicked the button just as it timed out. I was gonna. Uh, there's no way. Far out. Too busy talking again. Yeah, that's good. Ten, that ten bucks is that's ridiculous. To be honest, that's probably one, that and the beer one. Probably two of the biggest steals so far. Nurk. You look great yesterday. Yeah, Nurkic. I am in on here as well. People know that I'm going to be in on him. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, let's see. And no concern about it. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. What was that? I said no concern about availability. Nah. He's a chance to get hurt, but nothing that's ma- majorly bothering me with it. Yeah. Let's see. People are going to bid me up here again on Nurkic. Is it 24 bucks? Mm-hmm. Who's his Jello Jiggler? What's he? his team? Noel Gobert, Pirtle. He's got some of the guys that I was targeting. All right, I'm not going any higher than 25 bucks on, on Nurkic. You can have him if that ends up being the case. $26 for Nurk. Yeah, you can have him at that price. All right, that's got a bit of extra cash off the board. I actually didn't want to go that high on him. Um, I was more interested in like a 20, 22, 23, but I just extracted a few extra bucks off someone who's obviously bidding for similar guys to me. So Nurkic is off my list. I'm probably going to... Who am I going to replace him with? Hmm. I might look at a... Um, hmm, Isaiah Stewart, probably, is the guy I look at next to replace him. I got to I got to ask Josh, what is your uh, what is your strategy as far as bidding people up because I know you've been talking throughout this draft about, you know, getting some money off the board and a couple extra bucks here and there. I mean, are you consciously bidding guys up when you when you really think that hey, I'm just going to keep driving the price up and then ultimately not take that guy? It's only really if I can stomach 
getting that guy close to that price. And it's very hard to... 21 bucks for Russell Westbrook could end up being a steal. It's only when I, when I look at it and go, well, I, I can stomach this or I've looked at how the bidding goes and go, I know this guy is going to keep going another dollar. Like I knew that Nur- Nurkic guy was going to go another dollar. And oh, he's got a lot of the guys that I was after, that Jello Jiggler, but he paid way more than I wanted to for Noel, for Gobert and for Nurkic and for Pirtle, right? So he paid way more than that. So I'm happy to get that money off the board. Now, Isaiah Stewart, I am in on this one. So let's see how we can build this up. I don't know what I want to spend here. His Yahoo projected up to 18 bucks. Hmm. That's too high. 15, right? I mean, is that, is that about the most you're willing to go? Yeah, probably, probably 12, 13. Let's have a look. Where am I at with him? Yeah, I might go to 16. Who's bidding with me here? The right to win. It's going to get to a stage where he is too highly valued. I think we're getting really... We're, we're there already. All right. That's it. I'm not going any higher than that. No, oh, no, yeah. I'll go one more. And then we'll let someone else take this. Or, okay, it's fine. Take him for 19. It's too much. Yeah. Do you uh, do you think he's going to get to a point where Olenek ends up being the better value? I mean, just because of how high price Stewart ends up going or still Stewart? I think Stewart will still be the better option, but in terms of value, I reckon we get... Um, yeah, I reckon Olenek could end up being a pretty nice value. So again, everyone's going for these guys. So we're, while there is value in these players, like we're getting them off the board at a really, really interesting um, number and overpricing all of these players. And I'm pretty much like, I've got my number that I'm going and I'm trying to push them higher to get that money off the board. And it's it's, it's working okay. I'm still, you know, my team is very, very far from full. Darren Fox. What are you doing with Foxy here? Uh, I like Fox this season. I hope he can continue what he did at the end of last season, but there's no guarantee of that. What are you feeling with Fox coming up for the year? I think he's a, I think $20 is probably right in his range. Um, It's starting to get a little expensive, but uh, yeah, I I think he'll be fine this year. Uh, I don't necessarily have too many concerns about, uh, you know, the Davion Mitchell pick, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald. I think people are kind of blowing the, you know, the loaded backcourt narrative out of proportion. Let's the next guy that I, I want to see if I how I go in terms of targeting is Rob Williams. I wonder mm-hmm. how people are going to view. Well, Miles Turner, I might be in on this. Let's see how much Miles goes for. Yeah, I might be in on this one. I think I'll go up to like twenty. I'm not convinced. Get some money out. It'd be great from other people. All right. Yeah, I'm done now. I'm out. Getting a bit of money off the board. Happy with that. Oh, these guys are all a bit of a bidding war. Yeah. That's fine. Happy to get that out of there. So, int- there's, there's some value sitting here. Ingram, Brown, Ball, Booker, Toby Harris. Drew Holiday is someone who I'm looking at as well. Rashawn Holmes is someone I'm looking at. Dr- yeah. Draymond is someone I'm looking at. Holmes fits that build for you, I mean, to a T, right? Yeah, he does. Johnny Collins. Do you think there's any ch- real change from Collins from this last year to this year? No, he's a guy that he, he doesn't really hurt you in any category, right? I mean, he's he's low turnover. He's He kind of gives you just a bit of everything across the board, and he always ends up being more valuable than what you expect him to be. So, no, he's a, uh, he's a really, really safe pick, I think. He's safe. I, just, I don't see much improvement, but he's really safe. You're right. So he goes for $17 there, Collins, which is a bit less than the Yahoo um, expected mm-hmm. price, which is... Totally fine. A guy who gets undervalued pretty much every draft is Gordon Haywood. I don't see what he ends up going for. He's, you can get him for like 10 bucks sometimes. Devin Booker. Um, hmm. I think he might get overpriced here. 
People love scoring. They do. He was a bit disappointing last season for fantasy. Amos going all in here, using all of his remaining money on that bid there. Now he's priced out. Ooh. It'd be tough to fill that team up. Yeah, he's going to have some rough goes at things later. But there'll be some weird $1, $2 guys pop up. Yeah. That'll end up being valuable players. I'm hoping that I can get some of those guys. So I've only got two players on my team. That's not ideal, is it? I forgot that I had Christian Wood. Um, so Booker's at 23, 24. I think that he is like a 26, $27 guy and he goes for 23. So a lot of bargains all over the place here. Very few guys have gone higher than I anticipated. Very few. People are being very smart with their money. Their fake money. Lamello Ball. Hmm. He, 30, I think, is right for him. 28 to 30 is right for Lamello. Absolutely. I'm just going to throw 24 bucks on him. Yeah, why not? Out of curiosity, man, who were the, uh, who were the guys that you were really expecting to be kind of bid up throughout this process? I mean, who were the hot names that you were thinking you know, might get a little bit more um, I, I think- action? I think Anthony Edwards is going to be bid up after yesterday's performance quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. he's he's next on my nomination queue. Lamella goes for 27. Again, a couple of dollar discount, not bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard, to, it's hard to judge. There's so much uncertainty. It's, that's why I think so many people are just holding back those extra couple of dollars because there's a lot of uncertainty around so many players. You know, all the situation, what's going on in Chicago... Giannis and people are worried about his knee. Jokic and people are worried about him resting. There's just so much weird stuff going on. <clears throat> Lonzo Ball. Now, I think we're talking 20 bucks here. And he's sitting at 13. Lonzo, I might be uh, in on that at 14. What do you think about him this year? I've seen projections for him just kind of all over the place. Either he's just a complete bust or... He's just going to be a phenomenal value. I mean, where do you fall? Um, I think if you get him outside the top 50 in a snake or for under 20 bucks in, in an auction, I, th- I think it's pretty good. I, I think he, his game doesn't depend on usage. The thing I worry about is that if they're going to put the ball in DeRozan's hands a lot to work almost as a point guard, that worries me a little bit for Lonzo. Um, but I, I do think that he is sliding in a lot of scenarios that, that can you know, work to your advantage. Reggie Jackson, starting point guard for the Clippers. You got him for one buck. Now he's up to two. I don't think that he is able to do what he did in the playoffs, but he's going to have the opportunity to. No Patrick Beverly, no Kawhi Leonard. He's going to start. He's going for three bucks here. Him, Love it. Yeah, so you get him for three. That's good. That's a good little addition to your team. So you got $17 left for your last seven players. It's my nomination. Who was I? I just, oh, that's who I'm going to throw out. Goose. Anthony Edwards. Mm. What are people going to look at him for? He should be a 24 to $25 guy. Look at that average at 15 because Yahoo had him ranked way too low, but they've updated him to 24 now. He should be going He's going to go for a lot more, yeah. Well, I hope so. No one's bidding up here. What's going on? I, I don't want him, but I just, I, I'm not letting him go for that price. And if I get stuck here, then I'm, it's not ideal. All right. Do I go again? I don't want him, but let's go one more. Oh, that's risky. Oh, that is risky. If you get him for 20, man, that's... I I mean, honestly, that's a value, right? Yeah, it is. I don't want him, though. But, okay, all right, let's go. Now, these other two guys, let's let's let them bid against each other. I'm not going up again. Ah, yes. Mm. (laughs) All right, I'm out now. You two can fight amongst yourselves. I think he's going to be really good this year. I think he is undervalued in a lot of spots. Um, 21, but I thought, again, I thought people would overreact a little bit to what he did yesterday. So I put out tweets and Instagram stories, you know, who was the most impressive player. And I listed yeah. a couple of guys and Edwards wasn't one of them, but multiple people replied back. Now it was Edwards. It was Edwards. Like, okay. This is yeah, what... breakaway dunk. I thought people would just be going crazy for that. This is who I want. I want DeJounte. There you go. And I'll spend 20 bucks on him. I don't know if I have to, but it, it appears that everyone that I want goes up to their price and every other player that I don't want goes under their price. So, yeah, look, there's already people having a bidding war for DeJounte Murray. 
What's his ceiling this year to you? I don't know how much more he's got to improve uh, from a um, fantasy perspective. I think he scores a little bit more, but fuck, why are we going so high on this guy? Everyone that I want is just going above. You bastards. <laughs> he's gone for more than Anthony Edwards. Fucking ridiculous. I can't justify that. Someone else can deal with that bullshit. So this Jello guy is trying to build the same team as me, but he's spending too much money on it. It's going to hurt him very soon. Because he's spent too much, I think, on a bunch of guys. Nurkic, Gobert, Pirtle, Noel, Murray, all gone too high, and then Lonzo at 19. So he's going for basically the exact same strategy as me. I don't know how he worked out. That's what I was doing. Yeah, I don't... For the amount of money that he has left, I feel like he's way overpaid. Yeah. be interesting to see what he ends up going for. Oh, Jonas Valanciunas. Um, a, lot of, a lot of concerns for him this year, man. Yep. There is. I, I don't know how much they're going to play him. I think Zion being out will help him early on. If Zion uh-huh. does is in fact out, but I'm just I don't know. Do, do they play him 28 minutes a night? I'm really I'm really not convinced. Would take him at 13 though. I don't know if I would. Would I? You don't think? Oh no, I would. I no, would. That, no, no, no. Scrap that. Yes, I would. Jeremy Grant, big scorer, not huge amounts else. Not someone that I'm particularly in on here. I seem to be lower on Jeremy than most this season. But he's only off for Why nine bucks. Uh, I just think that last, well, adding Cunningham, yeah. um, you know, takes away usage from him, and he really thrived on having really high minutes and really high usage, and he shot well above his head to begin the season, and that's that crashed back down as the season went on. Um, so I just don't think he's going to be able to maintain that level of usage that he did you know, for last season with with Cade around. Haven't had any rookies uh, go yet, which is interesting. How many players have we actually had drafted? Where Jesus, only fifty seven. Ben Simmons, what are you doing with Simmons? Are you avoiding at all costs? Are you thinking there's value yep. in him? Yeah, I'm I'm avoiding it all costs. I'll just give you the simple answer. I don't want any part of a guy that is publicly feuding with his team and refuses to see his teammates, and uh, you have no idea what he's doing. So, no, I, I wouldn't even spend $2 on him. It's a waste of money. Yep, I'm not interested in him either. He goes for five. <laughs> he went for five. Five bucks. Yeah. Five, but if, it, if he plays, it's obviously a steal. Yeah. It's a huge steal if he plays, but there is a lot of risk there. Porzingis. All right, I'll just pretend that I'm inve- invested in this one because I sort of am, but I'm sort of not. Uh, I think Porzingis is going to have a pretty big year. I think he's a $25 player. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hope I can get money off the board by bidding him up to at least 20 Because I'm just... What I'm doing here is I'm just bidding really quickly to, to make people think that I'm actually interested. And I just hope I don't get stuck. But if I do get stuck at under 20 I, I don't actually care because I think it actually I can work with that. But I want people to think that I'm super into it and get other people involved in the bid. So is it twenty bucks now? Um, because it looked like he was going to go for like ten, eleven bucks there at one point. All right, so those guys, yeah, all right, done my bit there. Get him off. I've, I'm going to have to start coming in really strong on a bunch of guys here, which I'm going to do. I'm just waiting for them to get nominated. This is up to twenty two now. I'm the only person on a me and the IP address. I've got a hundred over a hundred bucks left. Who's IP got? OG Randall and Aiton. Okay. Evan Mobley. I think the Cavs are going to screw this up. I really do. I, I, I think they're going to screw it up. I mean, don't they always, right? I mean, why why would you pay Laurie Market and so much money to... I, I mean, when you just drafted Evan Mobley and you just signed Jared Allen to that $100 million deal. I don't I don't understand exactly what they're doing. It doesn't make any sense at all, but he's gone for five bucks. No. I, I don't want to spend $5 on him. Nope. How much do you think Josh Giddy's going to go for? Because I want him. He's a target for me here. Uh, I don't know. I I mean, is he hyped up after yesterday? Are people people that are in this draft obviously are tuning in to you and you're very high on him. So, I mean, probably goes higher here than usual maybe. I don't know. I'm in on DeRozan here. But I'm going to 
I'm going to be coy. I'm not going to get in too early. I want Damar, though. I want his assists. Mainly his assists. I think he works okay for me. He doesn't hit threes. I think his scoring is going to be down this year. Yeah. He's come down to $14 in their um, average salary. Hopefully I can get him at that. If I can get him for under 17, I'll be happy. Stop. Amos, you have no money. Stop it. <laughs> Save your money. Digital Huskies, you can piss off as well. Ah, all right, 18 bucks for DeMar DeRozan. Shit. Don't, don't anyone come in. Got him. Oh, thanks. I hate it. Awesome. All right. Jalen Brownie Brown. Should be 25 bucks plus. Like, watch him go for like under DeMar. I oh, know he's already up over that price. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to throw bids on him because I, I don't want you bastards getting him at a discount. All right, 20 bucks. Let's go, Jalen. Not interested, but. Bid him up, guys. He is way better than this. Come on. I'm the. Where's Amos with his you know, big fat wallet? Twenty-one dollars. Go! For, oh my God, Jesus Christ! Like that. This draft is so weird. What? I, it's so weird. Man, I, I gotta ask, how do you like your team right now? No, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I've just heard you. It's been nothing but fuck and shit and and <laughs> bastard and. Yeah, I mean, do you like your team? Nah, or? nah, not at all. Not not at this point. <laughs> um, but I've still got a, got a few cards up the sleeve. Still got a plan. Yeah. Ingram going. Ingram should be going for mid twenties as well. Mm. All right, so he's going for more than Jalen, which I don't like. I don't think he should have, but he is. I've still got a bunch of guys that I'm trying to get. Hmm, Ingram at twenty two. This is this could be end up being my worst auction draft ever, to be honest. And maybe I don't, I don't, maybe I don't release the video. <laughs> 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 no, I'll definitely release it. This is, shit can happen, man. Especially when you're yeah. sitting here talking. But I had a plan and it got blown up. All right, Gordon Hayward, he always goes cheap. Let's see what I can do. Nine bucks on Gordo. I'm not actually wanting to get him. What's your take on Karis LeVert? I know he's not up yet, but with the back injury, how worried are you? I got him like 105 in a draft yesterday. I mean, I like that value. I think he has probably top, what, top 75 top 70, 75 ceiling maybe. Yep. Uh, but I mean, yeah, a, a late injury like that right before the season, it's got to be a big concern to you, man. It's your nomination. All right. Let's see who we can get. I got to nominate somebody on the cheap here because I am out of cash. So who do I want? Regardless of who it is, you're probably not going to end up getting him. I appreciate the encouragement, man. <laughs> <laughs> Keldon Johnson, um, yeah, not interested. I think he's being overvalued personally. I think he's a one dollar player. Let's see if he ends up going for one dollar or not. Not two dollars. I don't. Nothing wrong with him for two dollars, but people are no. very excited about him this season. I'm not, not as hyped. Three bucks for Keldon. All right. So much common sense in this draft, which is annoying me. All right, I'm going to throw out Tyrus Halliburton. I'll go up to like 18, 19 here for him. I thought he looked pretty solid yesterday. He started while Heald came off the bench, which was interesting. Which they should do, but whether they do it or not is another story. I mean, what do you project for the Kings? Do you think they'll do that? Or do you think they'll run some more of that, you know, kind of three-guard set that they toyed with last year or what? I don't know. They started Bagley here, so which I don't think is necessarily the greatest move. And Barnes is way yeah. better as a four. Um, I, I do think that they will f piss off. I do think that they <laughs> will... Um, I think they'll end up starting healed, but I didn't expect them to start preseason that way. All right, so... If I got other options, if I don't get Halliburton, I'm sure I can find someone else. He's at twenty-two dollars. It's too much. 
All right, you can have him for 21 bucks. That's fine. They're, these all these, Every person that I'm after is going for well above their average price. I've never... I know people target who I target, but I've never seen it happen this way where every player that I'm going for is like six, seven bucks over the price. Even Rashawn Holmes is someone that I'm after here. So let's see what he ends up going for. Like Halliburton for 21 bucks is crazy. Didn't Jalen Brown go for 21 bucks? Like that's insane. <laughs> right. All right, I think I, yeah, 20 bucks here for Holmes is good. Yeah, I mean, you go all the way up to 25, right? Or would you? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, man. What the fuck's going on? Every guy. It's 25 bucks for a Sean Holmes now. Oh, what the hell? No, I'm taking for 25. I'll do something different Jesus Christ um, oh man it's looking ugly but people are just it's so weird I, okay I need to work out how I'm going to adjust this team now alright I've got an idea Rob Williams is someone I want Let's see how overvalued they value this guy. Would watch Rob Williams go for like more than Jalen Brown? Something insane like that. Oh, he's a spicy name. He is. All right, I've got him for sixteen bucks. Oh, can you just everyone? Like, you don't even have the money, my guy. Digital Huskies, calm down. You don't have the money. Which other asshole is going to come in here? My guy, you don't have the money. <laughs> All right, 20 bucks. Oh, God, I hate it. Got him. I hate it. Thank you. But I hate it. Um, Cade Cunningham. I'm in on Cade here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, Maybe not, actually. I need... For twelve bucks, I'll take Cade. Um, hmm, fourteen bucks, too high. No way. Um, I think. Oh yeah, I don't. Yeah, this is disaster territory. Oh guys, my team is looking terrible. Can I still recover it? I think maybe. Andy Wiggins. Are you doing anything for Wiggins here? Depending on how much I I, I mean I don't I have seventeen dollars left, so no, he's getting to be a little too rich for my blood, but he's a top one hundred guy. I Is mean, he? You gotta love yeah, you gotta especially since he just got vaccinated, you gotta love him this year. Nah, not not interested. I don't think I don't know. No. no I, I think maybe maybe he's a top one hundred guy. Five bucks though is not bad. Yeah. Okay. Jaron Jackson. All right. I'm in on this, and I'm sure someone's going to outbid me. I'll go to 25 on him. I'm just getting to a stage where my team is just dreadful. So what's the plan now? Just hold a bunch of money till the end and load up on value? No, nah, there's no value. That's the thing though. Every time that I try and get value, it's, it's, it's not value because everyone is yeah, putting those guys at a higher price than you know, I think is worth it. So even Jaron heading to this price is, is high. Why is why is Jaron Jackson getting bit up this much? Who 
Oof. Is it because I want him? It's getting to the stage I'm just going to have to take these guys at these higher prices. Like, it's too high for him. It's absolutely too high, but I've got money. Like, oh. Oh, good. good. What's fucking going on here? Uh, You're the only guy with over $100 left. I know, because every single player is getting $10 over on the price on them. Mm-hmm. Like, that's too high for Jaron Jackson. Yeah. Spencer Dinwiddie. I might be in on this one. Let's see if people view him as a guy. Yeah, every every single player I've been in on has gone way above the price that I'm willing to pay and then gone for insane prices that make them look completely overpriced. But it's leaving me with so much money around. So I, I and I said at the start of this show before you came on, Zach, like I'm trying something really specific here, and it's not how I normally would approach a draft, and it hasn't worked out pretty clearly. Normally, I'd just be looking to see where the value fits and adjust on the fly, but when I'm going in with a bunch of these set targets at these prices, and everyone just bid them up way too much. So not a strategy you're going to try again. Nah, okay, I think it was it's worth it was worth trying, but it just it just didn't work out. And sometimes that's what happens. Like, no one could have come in and told me Jaron Jackson's going to go for more, way more than Jalen Brown. Like nobody could have come in and predicted that 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 was going to be, um, yeah, something that happened. Like you just couldn't have. So I was planning on certain prices for these guys, and they ended up going ten bucks more, like out of nowhere, where other players going six seven dollars under where they should, which is pretty crazy. So I'm in on Jarrett Allen here. Ooh, somebody in the chat said they got BAM for less than Triple J. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. That's some, it's crazy, those prices. Ooh. Yeah, this, this, this auction has been off the rails. Like, really? This guy just keeps waiting every time until one second's left on the clock. So, so me and him are going back at Jarrett Allen. Who's his team? And he waits till like one second, then bid. Oh, he didn't. There you go. Got him that time. Jarrett Allen. All right. So that's my Jaron Jackson replacement, who was then my Rudy Gobert replacement or whatever. Like, my team is just not looking good. All right, let's get some guards. All right, I'm in on Drew here. I'm overspending on Drew if I have to. I wonder if just because I'm bidding on him that he's going to go above the 25 bucks. Literally every other player has done that. <sighs> I don't know if uh, I don't know if other teams have the money to keep overbidding uh, like that. It's still you. Yeah, which is fine, but these other guys like IP and Jello Jiggler. They're going in on him. Mm-hmm. See, I'm down under 100 now. And me and I appear only 10 bucks apart in terms of what we've got left. I'll go 25. 20, I'll go up to 27 on Drew here if I need to. So I just actually need him. It's, it's too high, I think, but especially given some of the prices on others. But hey, you got him. I got the money, so I have to start doing it. Right, my team's starting to look a bit better. It's still not ideal. Toby Harris, is he? Hmm. No, I think I'm gonna leave that. Watch him go for like nothing. He should be a twenty-seven dollar guy, probably. Yeah, this late in the draft, he's probably gonna be a value. That's the thing. Everyone that I'm waiting for at this point in the draft is supposed to be a value, but then ends up going for higher than bloody LeBron. Yeah. Like, what's... What? Yeah, so, like, $18 for Toby Harris is insane. 
Yeah, that's a nice value. That's a crazy price. And if I hadn't have been talking, I might have actually just jumped on that. CJ. Should be a $20 guy. Let's see what he goes for. My team is not, it's not that far off where I want it to be. And it's going to start to come together with my next couple of guys that I hope that I get. As much as shit as it looked, or shit as it does look, and as annoyed as I've been, I think there's some recoverability here for me. Mason Plumley, yes. Let's go. I'm I want Mason Plumley. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh I need some cheap options Jello here. Jello Jiggler. I love Plumley. Leave it alone, Jello. I'll go up to six or seven here on Mason. Shit. What's this guy's problem? We really bidding up Mason Plumley. Apparently, every single guy. He's got more money than me left now. This Jello Jiggler. So the pitfalls of having really strict strategies when you're heading into a draft. Now, do I just let him again go too high on someone? Maybe. Fuck it, take him. Hmm. It's too much. It's, it's, it's way too much. All right, my turn. Let's go. This is who I want. Let's see how Draymond Green goes. I will spend over 20 on Draymond Green. Oh, what a shock. Jello Jiggler is trying to get him. <laughs> Your nemesis. Oh, man. Every one of these guys has been too high. But he's annoying me by taking the same players. We'll see how he ends up finishing out his team. Is it Draymond? I'll go I'll go over twenty here, but the Jello's just gonna keep on going with him. The problem is this is gonna mean that the guys that I want late he's going to be in on as well. Draymond Green is a $20 player. Can you just leave him alone for once? Fuck. At some point, I've just got the money. I'm just going to, I just have to keep going and piss this guy off. Like if I have to overpay, I'm overpaying. <laughs> He's got like five of the targets that I wanted. Oh, oh my, oh my. I'm taking this one. Like, oh my God, what is going on with this guy? I want to leave him do it because he's, he, he's misvaluing players. He's got a punt build on and he's bidding up to their actual price on the punt build. And I want us, him to understand that that's wrong. But I fucking need Dream on Green. Hate to say I'm taking pleasure in this man, but this <laughs> now, look, the bidding war is take him for funny. thirty. Take him for thirty-one bucks. Like I will, I'll, I will figure it out. That that is the wrong way to go about Oof. it. Um, mm, thirty-one bucks. He paid too much for me for a bunch of a bunch of these players. Shit, it's too much. But now I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of getting assists in. Oh, and actually, that's not true. I, I sort of know what I'm going to do. Um, Buddy Healed. Any interest in Buddy Healed? Uh, if I had a few more bucks, sure. See, so, I probably wouldn't go beyond five or six bucks mm, anyway. No. Nah. Some of these prices are actually insanity. Draymond Green going for 10 bucks more than Jalen Brown and $13 more than Toby Harris is insane. Now, obviously, I was pushing him up a bit there, but in the end, I wanted to... Um, not teach him a lesson because that's the wrong thing because his team's probably going to be better than mine. But it's just it's at that at some point like being stuck to your build, which again is my my mistake heading into this draft of having that set thing, which is something I normally won't do. Um, 
can put you in a real problem. He's got five spots to fill with 30 bucks. He's got a pretty strong team. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, like he's, yeah. Oh, we'll see. Chris Boucher missing the start of the season with his finger surgery. I'm I'm just not going to be drafting him, I don't think. I don't think he's upside. His upside is high, but I don't think the minutes are there for him this year. And then now not ready to start the year. No, thanks. It's five bucks for Chris Boucher, fine. Yep. Feel the same way. How many players have I even got? Six. I've got eight to go. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to do then. Colin Sexton, he was he's going to go for a bargain. I can almost assure you of that. Um, Ten bucks is super cheap if he ends up going for that price. He should be like a sixteen, seventeen dollar player. Oh, I'm actually no. That's that's help me hold back on that. Thirteen, fourteen dollar player. Oh, he's up to that price now. Yeah, eleven dollars not bad. W- what a shock that a player that I don't want goes for about the right price. I feel like I, I feel like I only really overpaid a little bit for Drew, a couple of dollars there, a couple of dollars for Jarrett Allen, because um, everyone else I wanted just was going like eight dollars too high. What do you make of Nikhil Alexander Walker not starting yesterday, but still playing well off the bench? I don't make too much of it. I, I don't really see who's going to start ahead of him uh, in the rotation. I think it's going to be a backcourt of him and uh, Devontae Graham. Uh, I, I can't see anybody else taking that spot over for him. No, I, I don't either. $7 for Alexander Walker. Sure. It's probably a little too high for me. Jello Jiggler nominating a play. Let's see who you nominate, my guy. and see if I can steal him. I won't be able to. Well, you've got no money left, so I can if I want. But I've got no money left, and there's also no players left. That makes it harder. Darius Garland. I do actually want Darius Garland. Um, how is he already up at this price? Ooh. I'm, I don't want to go any higher than this. How is this happening? Every player. $20? You guys are joking. This is more than Tobias Harris. Have him. Like, what are you doing? The the I think the thing that's screwing with my brain here, Zach, is that a lot of people in this draft are, are using horrible processes and bidding up guys to prices that are just way too high, but it ends up it's ending up screwing me over. But so the the pro, maybe the process isn't that bad, but people are spending just way too much money on guys. So is there any chance that people that are in this draft are guys that are just listening to your pod and just really oh, they, want they to get all together are. and collectively fuck with you or yeah. what? Uh, they're all they're all people who listen to this show. So they're all <laughs> yeah, it is, it is part of a problem with doing sort of any drafts is that everyone sort of knows who I like and, and what I do and all that sort of stuff. Um Karis Levert for eight bucks. Oh, I just wanted to chuck a bit on him right at the end and missed it. Oh, well. I guess I'm just going to accept my fate of being a terrible, terrible team. With $68 left for eight spots. Oh, you got guys to turn it around, man. There's still some guys out there. There's not many of them, though. No, but... Oh, Miles Bridges for four bucks. What's going on there? No, we're not letting uh... him go for four dollars. Um, he's not. not he's not someone that I'm particularly targeting, but I've got to start spending money somewhere. All right, so eight dollars. <laughs> and Amos, who has no money, is going to bid you every up. time. Yeah, oh my god! I'll go one more, and we'll see if Amos takes it again. I think I've got him here. I don't actually want it, but. Um. Yeah, that's a fart. Not interested in that. Oh well. Ten bucks for Miles Bridges, I think, is okay. I'm not in love with it at all. 
Malcolm Brogdon. I do want this one, though. Don't we all? $17 average price on Yahoo. I'll go up to 20 here, I think. I think Brogdon's a guy that's definitely being undervalued, too. I mean, he's a, what, top 50 guy, right? I mean, especially if injuries to Levert, Warren... Uh, just kind of keep going, or maybe they, you know, they make a trade or something like that. I think more or Brogdon is is a big value. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm a bit worried about Rick Carlisle slowing things down a lot. Um, mm. I'm a bit worried about like Brogdon last year started off like insanely high with steals, and and they came way back as well as the season went on. Um, and he's a guy that always seems to have something going wrong with his lower body, his quad, his knee, his calf, or whatever. There's always something going on. All right, I got Brogdon for sixteen bucks, which actually. Is finally one where I think the value on that is not too bad. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> so how many I got? How many spots you got left to fill? You got? Uh, I still got seven. Um, I've only got six left. Marcus Smart. I'm not in on this one, but. Let's see. Hmm. Marcus Smart. I think well, he's going to be the starter. Ten bucks for him is fine. Um, this might be a, a decent deal if he goes here. Um, how many guys have I got? Someone said Marcus Smart has never been good for fantasy. That's just not true at all. <laughs> no. That's just absolutely not true. I don't know where that idea came from. That really is not true. Siakam for 11 bucks. I guess the worry there is just the injury, isn't it? has to be. TJ McConnell. I don't think TJ gets anywhere near what he did last season, Zach. What do you think? I, I'm, I'm still going to kind of harp on injuries to Indiana, man. I, I still think McConnell is a uh, pretty solid value, man. I mean, just with the, the high field goal percentage, the assists, the steals. Uh, but, man, shoot, I'm, I, I can't afford it now, and I definitely wouldn't pay 6 or $7 for him, which is where he's going. Yeah, I, I, I'm not even sure he finishes as a top 150 player. He played like 26 minutes a night last year. Carlisle may not like him at that level. They will play a slower pace. I, I, I just don't see it. Of course, I didn't see it last year either, and he came out of nowhere to be like a top 70 or 80 player. My turn to nominate. Um, who are we throwing out there? I don't have anyone in my queue, so let's try... I want... Let's try Kyle Lowry, who I want to get onto my team if I can. What will I go with for Lowry here? Up to 18 or 19. Oh, I haven't got that much money left, actually. Only 42 bucks. Huh. I thought I had more money than that left. Are you interested in Lowry this season? Uh, I'm interested in anybody at the right price. Yeah, that's true. Um, just depends. I, I don't think he'll be bad for Miami. Uh, I don't think his value falls off tremendously. Uh, he can still He's still going to be a primary ball handler. He can still shoot threes. Uh, he's still a good rebounder for, I mean, for being a guard. So, yeah, I think his skill set lends well to uh, still being a really good player. He's going a bit too high here, though, again. Like, why is it, sure. yeah, everyone beating him up like insane? Fine, take him. I'm not spending that much on him. It's it's too it's more than Tobias Harris. It's craziness. I know it's all supply and demand, but far out, guys. It's too high, man. Brooke Lopez. I think he gets overdrafted in certain situations, Brooke. Um one year older, as we all are, but he's at an advanced age. Wasn't a top 100 guy last year. I think this is already pushing too too high. Finally, someone that I'm not interested in that's going too high. 
yeah, I wouldn't go this high for him at all. I'd I'd maybe spend three, four dollars tops. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, eight dollars is too much. Yeah, right, seven for T. There's a lot of these guys getting too highly priced here at the end. Kemba Walker. Yeah, let's go. This can be my Kyle Lowry replacement. Kemba was a top 40 player last two months of last season and the knee was actually getting healthy. I've, I'm under no illusions that I'm going to be able to get him at a cheap price here because it just has not happened. But, you know, I will... 15 bucks. Now I'm bidding against... The, the auto bidder is bidding me up. <laughs> Amos the prick has left after auto after bidding me up so many times. And now now the computer now now he's back in. Amos, come on, jump in. You know you want to annoy me one more time. Alright, Kemba for fifteen. I got that one. That's alright. Building the team out here. Now Zach, I've only got five spots left. And I'm getting to a stage where these some of these cheaper guys that I want, I don't know if I'm gonna get them at the cheap price that I want them for. Yeah, welcome to my world. How many spots does I've got left? Five. All right. Well, it was going to be Kemba or Mike Conley, some of these older point guards who. Um, well, I don't know what I was going to say. Get hurt a lot and get undervalued. Divincenzo. Uh, who bit? Uh, no. He's going to miss a long time, it looks like. It doesn't look great for him at this point. Yeah, he's fine for a dollar. I've got a couple of names that, that are, I think in a lot of drafts you can get cheap, but it's just not going to happen here with some of these guys that I want. Like I want, I want I'm going to throw Daniel Gafford out there, but there's no way I'm getting him cheap. No, he's he's another hot name, man. Mitch Robinson, I don't know how the injury is going to look for him, but at three bucks, I'll take him. Maybe that's a, me getting him instead of Gafford at three. Now, of course, Wes. Of course, you couldn't let me just have it. Fuck, I was about to jump in on him too. Now, okay, now the price is starting to come up. All right, I'll leave that alone then. There are some people who don't who still only have five players. Amos only still has five players. Huh. Who's on his team? Shit. Amos has Curry, Irving, Lillard, Wiggins, and Embiid. That's some risky options Ooh. there. Jesus. Uh, Conley. All right. Conley was one that I was going to get. Maybe I'm still in if I can get him for the right price. If I can get him for like seven bucks... I won't, but if I can, I'll be happy. No, everyone's going to bid him up. I don't take him then for eight. Oh, nah, let's go nine. I'll stop at nine. Yep, there you go. You can have him for 10. It's looking at Wes's team there. He's got Pool, Heald, Sexton, Tatum, Jokic, Calden, Alexander Walker, and Conley. He has. Only the one center. Ah, I don't know that I like that team too much. I mean, you got Jokic, but then you got a bunch of... Yeah. Sadiq Bay. Do you think Bay has got much room to grow in terms of what he can improve on this season? I'm not convinced that he will do huge, huge jumps in production. I, I think he's got a lot of room to grow. Um, whether or not he gets that room to grow, uh, especially with Cade Cunningham on the team, um, I, I just don't think that that's going to be a possibility for him. So he's mm. a, yeah, he's a maybe, you know, kind of 100 to 110 range type of guy for me. That's fair enough. I think I think around that 110 zone, he's, he's pretty, pretty good. I'm just not sure he gets higher than that. Bogdan Bogdanovich. He's getting he's sliding down in a lot of drafts that I'm doing, so let's see what he ends up going for. He should be over ten. I don't think he will be, oh. but he should be. I'll throw six bucks on him. 
Ah, oh, fuck, Josh. Uh, Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I don't actually want him. Someone else, jump in. Oh, sh- oh shit. Oh, it was I you. <laughs> meant to click when it was seven, not eight. Damn uh, it. Oh, did someone else throw a quickie on there? Yeah, they did. They waited. To- That's what happened. That gets a risk as well. Yeah. Eight bucks. Bogdan Bogdanovich. Actually, a pretty good deal for Bogdan. But it's annoying when you yeah. get a good deal, even though it doesn't isn't making sense with what you want to do. Someone's going to get a steal here with Terry Rogier, who should be like a $14, $15 player, I think. He's going to go for under 10. I'm just going to throw five on him. Hmm. Would you, would you bid on Kawhi? Well, I just I, I, I just bid and I didn't mean to bid then. But that's fine. Wes, in Wes's main goal is obviously just bidding me up every time he can. Oh shit! Get some of that money off of him then. He yeah, can have him. fifteen for fifteen bucks. You can definitely have him. It's yeah. not like it's an, it's not like it's an overpay, but it's also not yeah. a bargain. Which is I thought Reggie might end up going at seven bucks or so. No, but no, I wouldn't take Kawhi. I, I wouldn't be paying. I, I don't think he plays this season. I really don't. Uh, I, I uh, before the All Star break, there's almost no chance that he's playing. No. Hmm. Evan Fournier. The Knicks are in action today, so we'll see how they go. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't mind him for four or five bucks. Yeah, wee wee at that price, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Just noticed that my camera has uh, has frozen, which is awesome, so people can't see me moving around. Don't know why that's happened, but I'll see if I can bring it back. I'm sure I won't. So, someone nominating Dylan Gallinari, you can absolutely have him. I'm going to try and bring the camera back for me, but I don't know if it'll work. It did not work. That's fine. All right, my screen's gone. This happens when sometimes it's on for too long. It just doesn't, uh, it just freezes up. I'll get that back really soon. Um, Gallinari goes for a dollar. That's a dollar wasted. Why would you yeah. draft Daniel Gallinari? Uh, oh, it's it's your, your nomination, so I won't distract you too much. That's all right. You draft him if you hate money. So let me draft. I'll nominate this guy. I think he's, uh, there's no way I get him for a dollar, but fuck it. Let's go for it. Um, not he's injured at the moment. He's sore hip. It's a bit of a worry. Two bucks to drop there. He's an interesting uh, player, but I also think that what he did somewhat towards the end of last season was a little bit outsized based on um the absences that they had. All right, I'm, I'm going to throw this guy out here because I just want to see what he goes for because it'll just reassess what I do. Let's go with Josh Giddy. Let's see how much people okay. buy into yesterday. Because I'm going to say, I'm not going to buy into what happened yesterday because I was already pretty high on him. And, I've, you know, he's been a guy that I look at as a last-round guy for a, for a little while. I'll go five bucks, six bucks for him here. I'm, I'm pretty... I think he can almost be a top 100 player this year. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's more... Like, it's not that I think that he's that awesome. I think he's pretty good, but it's the opportunity that's there for him. It's just huge. Wes, my guy, piss off. In fact, <laughs> Wes... Oh, fuck off. Hey, fuck off. All right, I'll throw the five on him. There you go. Wes! What are you doing? I've got the money and I just want him, so eat a dick. Let's go. Josh, is part of your love for him just, I I mean, because he played in Australia? I mean, did you get a, a, did you focus more attention on him maybe than, you know, people that... Not really. He's just a really good, really, really good just, passer. Yeah. He's a really good rebounder for his position. And he's going to be the starting point guard and play over 30 minutes for the Thunder, who don't have a great team. It's If he was playing on a different squad where he was playing 20 mm-hmm. minutes an hour, I wouldn't be interested. So I, I do. Th- I, he was a guy that I think in my last mock draft I had going at six to the Thunder anyway. So I was higher on him than consensus, but I don't think it's got anything to do with him being, uh, being Australian. It's not like I was super high on like Josh Green the year before or anything like that. Right. Ooh, Thadjik Johnson. I don't know what's going on with this guy. I honestly don't know. Curiously, I, the two guys... Are, the, the Spurs are two guys over their roster limit. I think Aminu's going. And I think Thad's going. And they're the two guys who didn't suit up for them yesterday. Which was very, yeah. very interesting. I don't know if he's going to play or if they're going to trade him. I just don't know if he plays a single second for the Spurs. 
Spurs people aren't convinced that he does. And I, I, I just don't know what to make of that. Olenek. All right, let's get some money off here somewhere. I think Kelly is like a $10 player. Yeah, I mean, the way he finished last season, dude, he was, I mean, first-round guy for what the last couple of, I mean, he probably insane, won you yeah. playoff matchup, right? Yeah, he was insane. Yeah. All right, and he's already up to 10 bucks now. I'm not going to go too much higher than this. He wasn't actually a guy that I wanted to target, but at 10 bucks, he does work for me. <laughs> 11 bucks, he doesn't really work. Mm, he went for $11. All right. I think PJ makes a little bit of sense as well here. Let's go to six or seven on him. What, what do I actually need on my team? No. Hmm. Seven bucks for PJ Washington at the moment. Wes just bidding everyone up. Could not hate my team anymore. This has been an absolute disaster of a draft. PJ for ten bucks. That's okay. Yeah. Um. All right. DeAndre Hunter. A bit worried about his knees, but he was great. Before the knee injury last year, I'm just not sure that he's going to be able to do that again. Hmm. Eh, he's starting to creep up a little bit too. Yeah, it's a bit higher than I expected. He's got an average price of three dollars here on Yahoo. Yeah. Five bucks. Eh. It's pretty. It's not bad though. You can easily beat that value. So, how many players in are we now? Uh, we're like a, over a hundred. Robert Covington. Hmm. Robert Covington. All right. Maybe. Hmm. No. I was going to say maybe he makes sense for me. Yeah, let's add him. Eight bucks for Amos. Amos trying to go for like a full like seven bench guys worth a dollar, which is an interesting yeah, strategy. Really. He's not succeeding on it. Yeah, he is. He's just trying to fill out seven guys for a dollar on his roster, which is really hard to win, I think, doing that. 13 for Roko. What are you thinking? Yeah, this is going too high. $14 for Robert Covington. Is too, it's too high. I think. Way too much. Devonte Graham. Um, I I'm losing confidence that he is a guaranteed starter in New Orleans. I think they might go with like a Marshall or Murphy combination with Alexander Walker. As much as I don't think Alexander Walker is a good passer, but Ingram and Zion can do that too. I am losing a lot of confidence in Devontae. He was not very yeah. good yesterday. It seems like there's a lot of hype building around, I mean, even at the draft too, but uh, Trey Murphy, I mean, is that a guy that mm. you think really has a chance to, uh, you know, secure a, a really big role this season or what? It's, it's hard. There's just a lot of guys there. So it's you know, talking yeah, Marshall, um, Alexander Walker, Josh Hart, who didn't, I don't think played, or did he play? But he played like 20 minutes off the bench. It's hard to find enough minutes for Murphy, but I think he's good enough, but it's, it is a risk, and I'd like to see how that rotation looks when everyone is healthy, but there's just too many guys in that mix here. Alexander Walker, Marshall, Temple, Sadoransky, um, Graham. Terry Lewis. Yeah, I, someone's getting squeezed there, and I don't know who it yeah. is. They started Temple yesterday, and I don't even think Temple's going to play every night in the regular season, but if he does, then that screws you even further. $9 for Graham, that's surprising. Yeah, that's too high. Kyle Anderson, sixth man role this year, maybe? Look, that's what it's looking like, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Weirdly enough. I mean, even if, even as a sixth man, I mean, he's still, 
you're not taking him outside the top hundred, right? He doesn't drop that far. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure where I'm where I'm sitting with him at the moment. I'm a bit skeptical. Who's got the most money? The right to win's got thirty one dollars left. Seven bucks for Kyle Anderson. Yeah. It's okay. Not against that at all. But I, I am I am a little bit worried about where it sits. Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. Um Barnes was really good last year. I don't know how much confidence I have in him to repeat that. But he was pretty good. Four or five bucks is totally fine for Harrison Barnes. I just throw that extra five. I, I, don't, I don't actually want him. Someone take him off me. I don't want him. I just wanted to steal a dollar off somebody. This was a bad move. Oh, you got greedy. <laughs> that was a bad move. Yeah, that was greedy. Just a terrible move. Just hoping someone would spend more than five bucks on Harrison Barnes. Which they really should. But oh well. Yeah, that's not a bad price, honestly. Yeah, but it just doesn't make any sense with what my team is. Right. Wendell Carter Jr. Do you think Carter or Bumba is the option there in Orlando? Ugh. I, I don't know, man. I mean, the hype right now says Bamba. But, uh, I mean, as long as Wendell Carter is healthy, he's the guy. Yeah, sure. And supposedly he's been working on his three-point game too, which could just add another element to, you know, his fantasy value. So, uh, it's hard to say right now. Zubats. Serge Ibaka maybe looks like he could be ready opening night. We don't know that for sure. Um, he's going for three, four bucks. I think he's more of a two, one, one to two dollar player rather than three dollars, which is where he currently is. Him and Wendell Carter going for the same price. I'd much. Oh, actually, Zubat's going for more than Carter is not one that I would uh, agree with. Jalen Green's still available. I wonder what he's going to go to. It's surprising to see him still there. He is going to be my next nomination because I don't really want him, but I just want people to hopefully fight over him. Some of these guys with money left over, throw some cash oh, yeah. on him. Let's kick off some rookies then, man. Let's go for a guy that I really like this year. Yeah, I want him. Of course. Of course I'm not going to get him because Amos, my mate, is going to bid $13 on him. It's going to empty the clip. $7. What is going on? Every player. $7. $8. What are you guys doing? Double the price of Wendell. Triple now. I, I, I just threw 10 on it. I just want to see what happens. Is anyone going to take that for further? Well, it's going to be... That's another Harrison Barnes. Oh, <laughs> 11, no. Take him. 11 bucks. Good. That one worked out in my favor. <laughs> These prices... This stuff is insane. Fucking $12. Holy shit. I, I, I like sucks. That's too much. It is too much. This has been one of the weirdest auctions. My turn to nominate. Let's throw Jalen Green out there and see what happens. If he goes, drinking goes for less than Suggs? Yeah, probably. Oh, maybe not. That's because they haven't seen him play in preseason yet. Not that Suggs was yeah. awesome yesterday or anything, or he was okay. Who do you like more this year? Uh, I think it's a pretty close, to be honest. I think I like Suggs marginally better just because I think he's going to get there's more of those assist steals, better rebounder, block some shots, which I'm not sure Green does much more than that apart from score. But they're pretty close. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. $9 for Jalen. Jalen Green, that is. <sighs> okay. Norman Powell hurt himself yesterday I think he'll be fine but he should be like a $10 guy but he won't be 
someone's going to get a nice little bargain here on, on him. Because Zach, I can almost assure you, they're not going to bid him up. Because I, I, haven't, I haven't put my little note on there that I want him. <laughs> right. Do you uh, do you think taking a guy like Powell or even taking somebody like, you know, CJ McCollum is, you know, kind of gives you a little bit more value because you kind of, you have that incentive that if Damian Lillard gets traded that those guys' value is just going to skyrocket or is that something you're not even thinking about? No, I don't think there's any chance that Lillard gets traded this season. I think this is zero. Off season, maybe. I don't think there's any way he's gone this year. So that, that doesn't yeah, impact my thinking. Power goes for seven dollars, which is not it's not bad. Duncan Robinson. Fucking three dollars already. He's gonna get bid up too. And it doesn't look like there's that much money on the board, but but why spend it on Duncan Robinson? He yeah. gives you threes and end of story. Yeah, he goes for four bucks there in the end. Uh, forget that. There's your man. Yeah, I don't think I'm still in on him. I think someone else can have him. I, I more need to get some assists in onto my team. And of course, look, he's going to go for a cheap price. I think six bucks is probably six or seven dollars is fine. Is good for him. Oh, he's up to five now. I thought he'd get overbid for sure, and he didn't. And this this, this show is not going live. People aren't hearing me talk about who I want or anything like that. This is, I don't know how how this is continually happening. And I like Gafford a lot. Oh, I thought I thought this was live, man. No, nah, it's not live. People aren't hearing me do this. This is I'm recording this and it just gets uploaded afterwards. Oh, that adds a little bit of eeriness to it then. Yeah, like if you do them live <laughs> and you say this stuff like you you've screwed, you've got no chance. <laughs> yeah, right. Bumba. I think there's some value here in Mo Bumba. Fuck it, let's go. Alright, you're in there for four bucks. I used to get six it, spots, six spots to fill. Wow, it's going to be a nice little snake draft at the end here. All right, Mo Bumba for four dollars, pretty good. There it is. You got one five one dollar players to fill out your team. Let's do it. Jay Sean Tate. Hmm. Does he make sense for my team? A little bit. Not massively, but a little bit. Seven bucks. No. Holy hell. No, no, no. We're not we're not doing that. We're definitely not doing that. He's not even a starter this season. Not today. Eric Gordon's starting over him in today's game. I don't know what that means yeah. long term. Um nine dollars for Jay Sean Tate. Guys, you've got too much money. That's insanity. And that, if people save their money, you never know where the money is going to end up going. And it can go to wild spots like $9 for Jay Sean Tate. I got Miles Bridges for 10 bucks. Not saying that I've got you know, great value on guys because I, ne I don't necessarily think I have. But yeah, I'd much rather do that. Um, Any day of the week, man. RJ Barrett. Could improve and could have worse numbers this year simultaneously just because the other players around. Four bucks for RJ Barrett is a pretty good deal, I think. Mm -hmm. um, who have I got? I've got three spots left to fill. Yeah, Kelly Oubre. Are you having any interest in Kelly Oubre this year? I don't particularly. Uh, none at all, man. I, I can't see where he finds his way to any sort of fantasy relevance. On, no. I, I mean, it's just a loaded team, dude. Where is he going to play? Yep. I'm going to I'm gonna put D'Anthony Melton as an option for me. And because people know how much I love him, they're going to upbeat him way too much. But we'll see. I might actually just quickly check how he's going in that game where he's starting at the moment. 
and see if there's any any good numbers coming in that might people don't think will be watching that game and doing the draft at the same time. Um, six, three, and one in seven minutes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Jaden McDaniels, two bucks. Yep, absolutely the right price. Kelly Oubre went for one dollar, by the way, which is absolutely fine. No one took, made a bid on him. Um, I think Melton is an option for me now. It's not a good option, but it's an option. I've got $15 there for three players. Uh, Malik Beasley came off the bench behind Josh Okogie yesterday. I worry if there's enough shots for him. That's my concern with Beasley, but if he, I'd like him to play a 27-minute bench role rather than a 32-minute starting role, personally. I think the good thing about Beasley is, I mean, we saw his shots increase like tremendously last year, but his efficiency really didn't falter. So, I mean, he kind of has that built-in kind of has that built-in floor, right? Just because he is a great shooter. Yeah, unless they just really do drop the uh, the minutes down. Yeah. Indiana is trading Edmund Sumner and a second-round pick to Miami via Miami to the Nets. Any, any idea who's coming back? Sumner's not playing this season. I'm not sure what's going on there. That trade is just going on as we're talking. Isaiah Roby for two bucks, fine. I... What Woj just tweeted that out. I don't know. The Nets will waive Sumner. Okay, so what is the point of this trade? Ooh, I don't know. That's a great question. Oh, it's sick. It's Siku Dumbayari is getting traded. Hang on a second. Shams is tweeting something about Siku as we're doing this. The Nets are trading Siku to the Houston Rockets. Oh. Ah. Oh. Okay. And they just brought in. Sumner and waved him. I'm not really understanding how these moves are going down as I'm trying to do a draft here. And all right, I'm going to throw Tyrese Maxi out here as I try and work out what is going on with these trades that have just happened. So Siku has gone to Houston. I don't know what this means with in, why is Indiana trading Sumner for nothing? I, man, I'll tell you what, when Houston took a chance on Kevin Porter Jr., I thought that was phenomenal. I mean, because just because of the upside and, you know, they got him for next to nothing and they're getting him for next to nothing. They're getting Sekou right here for next to nothing too, which I don't really understand why Detroit gave up on him when they did. No, 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 but this is um, Brooklyn salary dumping him. It saves about them 20 million in tax payments. Stop bidding up my guys. Oh my God. This is, it's going to make my team look terrible, but this is, this is terrible theory from these other guys and I know my team is going to end up worse than them but it makes look you're getting no value here and I'm just going to take Tyrese Maxey because screw it for 10 bucks it's way too much money and I know it is and I would never do that in a draft that counts it but there's some of the theory behind some of these moves from these managers who again they're going to end up with a better team than me it just doesn't make any sense 10 bucks for for Maxi's insanity and I just and I got him it's ridiculous um, Tim Hardaway for two dollars trying to still work out what's going on with this deal Brad Wanamaker is going to the Pacers oh, okay what what is going on the NBA has lost its collective mind with these weird little deals so where does Siku fit in Houston I don't think he's going to do much I still think there's some value on Siku, but I, I don't think he's going to play that much, is he? I can't imagine that he does, man. I mean, they, they're loaded at forward. Um, yeah, but I mean, he's still a really nice bench guy. Um, and it, I mean, I, I still think he has a lot of potential. Um, and they, Detroit just never really unlocked that with him. Larry Nance goes for a dollar. That's pretty good value. Oh, fuck yeah, that's great. Um, people let him go for a dollar I've got yeah I've got five bucks left so I can bid four dollars on a player and there's no way that anyone's going to let me have D'Anthony Melton for that price no there is no way god I hate this team it's one of the worst drafts I've ever had Harold goes for a dollar that's fine Mm-hmm. Matisse Thibel. Uh, bid him up, guys. Bid him up. There's no Ben Simmons. Come on. $10 for Matisse Thibel. Hmm. 
looks like the Rockets are doing some fun things in their preseason game. It's going to try and bring up that box score as we're talking. I'll tell you the first quarter. It's hard to judge too much. Jalen Green has two points. Okay. Um, Poku for two bu two bucks for Thibault. Uh, Alexei Pokashevsky probably going to come off the bench. Might start, but might come off the bench. I think he's worth absolutely like a one dollar flyer here. As we're winding this draft down, finally. Still got a few players left though. You still got five guys to fill. So does Danny. All one dollar guys. Yeah. Dylan Brooks. Yeah. Just depends on who's left. I mean, uh, me and him yeah. will just snake it out there at the end. Well, there's a few other guys. Drop Bears only got one dollar players left. Um, uh, yeah. Amos has basically just got one dollar players left. Um, I'm the boss has got one dollar players left. Wes has got one dollar players left. Dylan Brooks for four bucks. Digital Huskies. And I still got a couple of dollars to spend. So there's a few guys that can only bid a dollar. I'm just not going to get these guys that I want. Boyan for a dollar. Boyan's worth more than a dollar. Somebody. I don't want him, but somebody. Somebody. Boyan. Anyone? No. I know you there can't. You go. Yeah, I know you can't do anything about it. Oh, there's Amos using his last dollar. There you go, he redeemed himself. Yep. Tyler Hero. Hero was pretty good yesterday. Jello Jiggler came into this auction with the exact same strategy as me, and he pulled it off a lot better than me by overspending on a lot of guys, but pulled it off really well. Assuming that Ben Simmons plays, because if it doesn't, then his team is, is screwed. So I look at his squad. What's the risk there? The risk is Simmons. Um, and he's got Mitch Robinson as well, which is a bit of a worry. But everything else, I think, works out pretty well for his squad. And he got nearly everyone that I was targeting. So that the strategy works if the yeah, you know, if you're the only one doing it. So what would you do differently if you had to do this again? Uh, I, I just do what I no. I just I think what I do is just do what I normally would do in an auction and just look for where the value sits and then and then go from there rather than having such a narrow focus heading in, which is again something that that I was just trying to do differently in this one. Um, yeah, or, or but the thing is overpaying. Like whatever I overpaid, he just seemed to keep overpaying. And I thought I'd pushed him too far, yeah, and and gone too high on those things, but he was still able to get enough value in. I thought that I was putting him into a spot where it was too much. Um, but I think he ended up recovering all right. I think it, it helps when you get someone like Simmons for 10 bucks or whatever you got him for. Right. Bobby Portis for a dollar. No. I'm not, yeah, I'm not against it. I'm not for it either, though. Yeah, he was on my queue. Someone said I think that was on Josh's queue. No, Barton was not on my queue. Alright, fuck it. I don't think I'll get Clarkson, but I'm going to give it a shot. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. Um, yeah, two bucks goes for Jordan Clarkson there. I think Yeah. that's about, that's fine. I wouldn't go, I'm not going any higher than that. No, I was hoping I could sneak him in for a dollar, but nah. My turn to nominate a player. Let's do this. Let's try Dante Martin. Let's see how much someone wants to throw 20 bucks on him, even though no one has that money. Let's see how people go. Oh, of course you're throwing $2 on him. I can only go to 4 bucks here, so I'm out now. Of course. Of course. All right, that's fine. Couldn't possibly let me sneak someone through. Um, Amos is going to bid a $1 guy so who else can I get now slim pickings now yeah it's pretty rough 
At least I know what I'm going to title this video. Worst auction draft ever. <laughs> Seth Curry for a dollar? Yeah. He's not worth more than that, I don't think. But of course, nobody will bid him up because I didn't get to show interest. Yeah, he's like a 50 cent player. <laughs> Apologies to everyone for my camera just not working, so I don't know why. You can't see my reactions. I'll have to bring that back on in a second. Well, after this draft is over, I will. Nick Batum for a dollar? Don't mind that. If I had a chucked a bit on it, he would have gone for five. The right to win's got seven dollars left for his last player. San Diego's Shit. got eight dollars left for two players. I got five left for two. I think we're the only. Oh, and IP address got ten bucks left for one player. So if they want someone, they'll just they can. A lot of them could just grab it, but we'll see. I want um, Killian Hayes, and one of these assholes is going to bid on him. Oh, I also want Eric Bledsoe. Can I get him for two bucks? What's the appeal for Bledsoe to you? Um. I just think that he is... He was completely disinterested last season. He's going to start for the Clippers. And I think he's just, I think he's just better than what he showed last season. I don't think he's back to... Like, two years ago, he was a top 70 guy. All right. I don't think he's necessarily back to that level. Oh, here's Killian Hayes. Let's see if I can get in here. I can go to three. So let's see if anyone... I'm going to wait because I've only got $3 left, all right? So I'll wait to see if anyone bids to two. And then I'll jump on to three. But no one acts... Oh, there we go. All right. So now this is all I can do is offer three bucks. Ah, oh, you bastard. Ah, oh, Jello Jiggler again, my nemesis. I hate this guy. <laughs> Someone took him for four. Now, now we're going crazy. Five. What is? What are you doing? What is going on? Jello Jiggler overpaid for all these guys and still somehow has $16 left for his last two spots. What the hell? And he goes for $5. So he's going to end up with a lot of money on the board. Shingun, you interested in drafting Shingun? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, he's he's kind of been standing out supposedly, is what the Rockets are saying. I'm just putting two and, dollars. I in. mean, he he kind of has that skill set, right, to just be really good for fantasy this year. I I don't see, uh, I don't see what's the problem in taking a little risk on him. No, oh, someone chucked three dollars on him, of course, because I just threw a bit yeah. on him. Well, as always. I've got three dollars left for my last pick. This is some of these prices have been so crazy. I might have to actually resort to like taking Derek Rose. Ooh. I don't feel good about it. I just Yeah. Or Dennis Schroeder even. Ooh, that's even worse. Who else? There he is. All right, let's just throw... Uh, will I throw the two on or will I throw... I don't like it at all. There's just not... I feel like I just want to end my misery though. All right, let's throw $2 on. And watch someone outbid me. <laughs> Every time. San Diego, you can, you can take him $3 because I can't actually do anything about that. Huh. Monty Morris is still there. Monty Morris missed every shot yesterday. Oh, shout out to Darius Baisley who missed every shot, every free throw yesterday. Just really bringing this, the form from last season back. Right. That sounds about right. Monty Morris, I think, missed all of his shots yesterday as well. Larry Markin is going to go. Larry Markin's going to go for one dollar, while Derek Rose went for three, and as did Shingun and Hayes went for five. I don't like Markin necessarily, but that the pricing is off there. Al Horford for a dollar. You know what? If I can get Al Horford for three bucks, I'll do it. I'm very loath to throw a two dollar bid on here because someone is just going to come over the top of me. All right, let's do it. As soon as it's, no one wanted to bid for two dollars, but as soon as I bid for two, someone should will come here for three, won't they? They have to. No, I'm going to get Al Horford for two bucks. Oh, you bastard! 
How? How does this happen every time? Oh my god. Oh, every time. I couldn't... Oh my god. Oh, let's try again. Who am I taking with this last pick? Is it Schroeder? I might... Mm, I don't know. you still got five left. This is your nomination, isn't it? Should I... No, I'm not going to screw you over. You're going to have Birch. Oh, thank you. All right. I'm going to try Markel Fultz. Let's see. Can I get Markel Fultz for a dollar? I know he's injured to start the year. Ah, oh, this one's going to slide through for a dollar, is it? Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So exciting. That's so good. Oh my God, it's the best. I love it. All right, I leave with $2 left in my kitty. That is really shit house. Alex Caruso. What? Why? No. What are we doing with Alex Caruso in a 12-team league? All right, so there's my team done. It is dreadful. That is a dreadful team. I don't think it's as bad as you're making it out to be, nah, man. It's, it's useless. It was just bad process and someone was just getting everyone that I wanted in uh, old Jigglypuff, whatever his name is, Jello Jiggler. <laughs> Isaac Okoro goes for a dollar. Monty Morris is another option that I could have gone for. He's going to go for a dollar here. So I'm out. So I'm just going to sit here and commentate on this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go and try and fix my camera while we do this, Zach. So while this goes through, can you just talk for this next 30 seconds while I try and get this fixed? Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, so Monty Morris off the board for $2. Waiting on the next nomination here. Looks like it is coming up to Jello Jiggler, and Jello Jiggler just gets who they want. Kawhi Leonard for eleven dollars. That was their last player. And Jello Jiggler, the scourge of Josh today, walks away with his final player. Patrick Williams goes for a dollar. It's my turn to nominate, and. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just go ahead and throw Andre Drummond into the queue there for a dollar. I'm back. It didn't fix, but I'm back. So I don't know what happened. All right. Oh, and the picks are rolling along now. So what did I miss? We had Pat Kawhi, Kawhi go for $11. Okay. Okay. Um, you missed your boy Jello Jiggler. Eleven dollars for Kawhi Leonard. All right, he had the money left, so that doesn't really matter. Um, Patrick Williams for a dollar. Um, Andre Drummond for a dollar. Danny Green for a dollar. Justin Holiday for a dollar. They are completely unexciting picks. Yeah. Which is fine. Um, and then we should just be like flying through snake draft style here. Then Aaron Gordon for a dollar and Eric Gordon for a dollar. Not really sure of the purpose of that. Eh, for a dollar, I'll take a swing on Jamal Murray. Yeah, I don't mind it. I, d I don't think, again, he tore his ACL in April. I don't think he's back any time before the All-Star break. Yeah. No one's taken Clay Thompson yet, which he usually gets drafted. It's a bit of a surprise. As we round in here to the last 10 picks. Jamal Murray goes for a dollar. Pat Connaughton goes for a dollar for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Why in the shit would you want Pat Connaughton on your team? I don't understand that at all. Shit, give me Grayson Allen over Pat Connaughton this year. Yeah, exactly. 
Derek, someone says Derek Rose still undrafted. My guy, he's gone. He went. Davis Bertans for a dollar. Um, Clay Thompson, there you go. You just picked him for a dollar. Nice little injury bench for you. Yeah, at the end of the draft, why not take swing on some upside? Fuck it. Um, all right. Franz Wagner for a dollar. Okay, so we're just making stupid picks now. That's okay. Oh, do I still have a guy left? I thought that was my last pick. Shit. There's not. You're the only. There's only two of you. Only two picks left. <clears throat> you and Drop Bear. Whoever I want. Yeah. Yeah. Not that there's many good options there. No. No, no. Who the hell do I want here at the end of the draft? Shit. I will take. You know what? I'll take the man with the beautiful hair. Who did you end up getting? Nick Claxton. Yep. And then Joe Harris went at the end of that draft as well. So what I'm going to do here, Zach, I'm just going to pause this while I go and try and get this camera back in action. And then we'll come back and chat about the end of the draft. All right. All right. My camera is fixed. We're back in business here, Zach. Um, just an absolute disaster of a mock draft for me. I absolutely hated it. Couldn't hate it anymore, I don't think. Um, yeah, just really really horrible in terms of how i structured it how how do you feel about yours uh kind of mixed feelings i felt really good there at the beginning i thought i got a uh, nice value with Derek white james harden uh d-low for ten dollars i loved uh, uh bogey for eight dollars i loved and even cat for 47 uh but then i mean that kind of gives you the dollar fill-ins there at the end so uh, I think I, I did the best that I could there at the end, but um, bench could have been a little bit stronger for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I just hate it. I hate that the way that the team ended up. Um, that narrow focus structure did not work at all. Um, and it's just, it's, I guess it's a lesson of, of how not to do I'll probably have to do another auction mock draft there to, to do a, a different style of one, but that did not work out for me doing that at all. Um, Zach, got anything you want to promote? Uh yeah, you can find me at uh, Zach the Monster on Twitter. Um, I'm currently doing fantasy uh, basketball content for Fantasy Pros, and uh, that work is also being featured on NBA.com slash fantasy. I uh, recently put out my top 250 with notes for every player, and that's out on Fantasy Pros. should be out on NBA.com very shortly. All right, so um, Zach, thank you for coming on. Go follow Zach on Twitter at Zach the Monster. Thanks for coming on, mate. I appreciate you having me, man. It was a pleasure. All right, guys, that'll do it for today's show. I'm absolutely exhausted. As you can tell, an absolute disaster of a mock draft from me. Um, auctions can go wild like that. Stuff can happen all the time, and everyone in there was just doing some weird, weird stuff. Guys, follow me, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you're here on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.